All right. Good. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the Gary Sensing Public Forum on March fourth at four thirty. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or off setting. The Gary Stansing Public Forum is intended for matters not included on the agenda for the upcoming Board of County Commissioners meeting. Citizens wishing to address items on the agenda should sign up to speak to such an item at the regular Board of County Commissioners meeting. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive mm -hmm. outbursts, protests, or other conduct which interferes with the orderly conduct of the Gary Stansing Public Forum. Each speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chair to allow sufficient time for all speakers. Um, as of right now, we have enough time to allow every speaker to have three minutes, but if we continue to get a whole bunch more, then, then we'll probably have to, to reduce it. Um, as first speaker of the night is Rebecca Brescia. Sorry. Brescia? Brescia. Brescia. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, just please state your uh, name and address for the record. And uh, Rebecca Brescia, 9809 Crestmont Circle, Pensacola, 32514. Good afternoon, commissioners. I was lucky this morning. I was lucky I woke up. More of a blessing, I should say. Lucky I made it with the kids to school to drop them off on time, which isn't always easy with teenage girls. Again, mostly God. Lucky to have a job, especially one that lets me turn right around, pick them up, pick them up when there's an emergency. Lucky to have the freedoms to do all of the above and lucky to be able to stand here and use my voice. But for how long? Every morning I wake up just to hold my breath. I scroll through the news to see how many more freedoms me and 330 million other fellow Americans lost while we were sleeping. How many more trillions of our hard-earned tax, tax dollars are being used for Capitol Hill's toilet paper and special interest projects? How many extra masks on my face are required for the moment? How many more trips to work, school, and home again before I need to worry about if I can even afford to work, since we are back to paying for imported gas? How much more verbal and financial bashing the police can take before it's not worth it to them? All these things are worrisome and cause stress. I can't be the only one feeling the pressure from all this. This morning I rose to a world where we the people's voting system is doomed. This happened fast and few are prepared. Declaration of Independence ensures us life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, but it seems all of that is on the chopping block. Personally, I'm very optimistic. There's always a silver lining, but the linings are dimming and the optimism fading. The only thing I'm able to have any control over is my family's safety. Millions, millions of other law-abiding Americans depend on the fact that if danger comes knocking on their door, they have the right to protect their most prized possessions, their families, the one they really go to work for, not the people spending it on Capitol Hill trying to take that right away. A county in Missouri has made headlines lately by taking extra measures to protect the Second Amendment for its citizens. This Second Amendment Protection Act would protect the rights of law-abiding citizens to own firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition, coupled with the protection from inflated taxes, registration fees levied against the firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. I've drafted the proposal to match Newton County, Missouri's cha changing only for county and state names, articles, and sections. I implore the leaders of this county to follow suit and allow us to uh, allow us a leg to stand on if push ever came to shove. Thank you for c your consideration in this matter. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, Gabrielle Davis. I'm guessing that might just be, Ga is it Gabrielle? Yes. Sir. Okay, sorry, there was an extra on there. My name is Gabrielle Davis. I live at 6020 Sombra Drive, Pensacola, Florida. I am addressing you today in hopes of, of getting the board to change or clarify the rule on repairing or replacing single pickets. I have several rental properties that require fence repair. That repair is merely taking off the broken pickets and replacing them with new ones. The maximum number of pickets to be placed on any of the properties fall between 10 and 22. Currently, a picket cost is $1.72. I have been told by Mr. Horace Jones that a permit which costs $45 is required, even if you're merely replacing one picket. 
Fin it is, if you read the fence permit, it says fence installation. It mentioned nothing about repair or replacement. Please note, the original fences were permitted and we're not moving them from that original position. The pickets are identical in height and composition. And the only way you would know the change that's taking place is by that coloration. The four by four, the main posts, nor the two by fours are being replaced. It makes no sense to require a permit to be secured and cost more than the pickets that are broken, damaged, or rotten. I do believe that this board should make a decision on what constitutes installation of a fence. A shed can be built without a permit and repaired or replaced without a permit. But one picket, one picket must have a permit. This board need not pass this back to Mr. Jones to put in file 13 or delay it. This board needs to understand that the county has more than 1,000 fences that require the placement of pickets only. The citizens of Escambia County need a policy that allows that work to be done at a certain percentage without having to pay a $45 for a permit. In closing, Mr. Jones did ask me to individually come to him because he had some leeway to make that decision. He wanted me to just come talk to him. That is not safe or fair. But before that, we need to do what, just to come to Mr. Jones each time I need a picket is not what I want to do. Mr. Jones should not have that decision. It should be based on policy or code that everyone will be treated fairly and equally. Please, do not push this under the rug, but schedule it for review. So far, I have over 60 names, addresses, and telephone numbers of my neighbors in Robins Ridge 1 and 2 who now face this problem, and I'm sure I can get more. And one final thing, I have bought a total of seven permits over the course of three years. And in those seven permits I purchased, not one time have any one of those fences been inspected after they were completed. If you call in, they'll tell you quickly, the inspection department don't have time to come inspect after you finalize a fence repair. So why pay $45 if they're not gonna come by and finalize it? Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. Harris, I, I, I know you and Pastor Davis are both pastors. I'm sorry they didn't trust you. But do you have to pull a permit to put one picket up? Is that true? Commissioner, this is what I told Mr. Davis. I said that we have to review what's going on with the site. And if it's determined that a permit is not required, we will make that decision. We have to make those decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. Because many times when they said they are replacing and repairing one or two, that's not always the case. But, hard, 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 to the point, and, and not to cut you off. If I got to replace one or two pickets, is a permit required? The code says a permit is required, but that's why I got to tell them, come in and see us, and we can review it based yeah. upon the site itself and what it's looking like on the site. Well, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, in, in we, review. yeah, but I mean, to replace one or two permits, I, I probably would, I, I would agree with Pastor Davis. I mean, that's ridiculous if well, you, you replace one picket. I mean, you're not replacing the pole or the two by four uh, and to pull a permit for a picket. I mean, that's not structural or anything yes, like that. And that's, and that's why I told Mr. Davis, case by case basis, we have to review that. But again, many times when it's one or two, it's become 20 and it's, and it's on somebody else's property line. And that's what we have to make a look at this height requirement. So we have to look at those cases mm -hmm. on a case by case basis. And the front counter planners, they do have to use, they use discretion. And, but again, everything is not always as it is or, or, or as it is stated. That's fine. Thanks, Ars. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. I, mean, I think we can find a resolution there. So, uh, Andrew Bluer. Andrew Bluer, 6101 Midas Place, you know, the place that floods all the time. You already know that by now. Um, I was hoping that there would be an add-on tonight, but evidently there's not. Um, the last county commissioner meeting we had, Jeff Gosh invited me to a public works meeting right here in these here spaces that following Monday. And that following Monday, they promised me in three weeks that they would have a plan. And Joy Jones and Jeff Bagosh and Wes let me down. 
I need some communication coach or something like that. Y'all don't seem to understand that I've been living with this for 26 years. And as a good faith, Wes was telling me he was going to do some things to, to help me out. And best of my knowledge, Wes hasn't done any of those. Those uh, penetrations through the Zachary Estates holding pond, the penetration through the holding pond on Softly Field. Water comes out of those penetrations instead of water going in there when those ponds are at full capacity. Same thing at the one at Midas and Muldoon. They put a pipe under Muldoon. They had to cut the road, patch it, and put a pipe underneath there. And guess what? Water comes out like a, out of a fire, ho fire hose into a tiny little teacup. Y'all expanded that holding pond on Midas and Muldoon, and I told y'all before you did that 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 was crazy. I was trying to save a tree, and, that, and I wanted that to be a community park. But y'all decided, well, to fix the problem, we're going to cut down this tree, and we're going to dig another hole and add, add that pipe in there. And guess what? It made the problem worse. I'm not a PE, but I tell you one thing. If the PE doesn't know that water runs downhill, then I'm a genius because I know water runs downhill. So I would like Joy Jones to explain to me why she reneged on her promise three weeks ago. And I know this is public forum or whatever, but I'm quite upset and, and I think I, I want to appreciate you, Commissioner Bagosh, or whatever. You're sympathetic to my wishes, but the thing that gets me, while I'm begging for help, you're not listening. You're thinking about how can I shut him up without fixing the water problem that he's had for 26 years. And I'm trying to communicate to you that I'm not going to stop it's been 26 years. I'm going to continue and continue until you finally come up with a plan that doesn't make it worse. You're going to make it better. you got Godwin Lane. Y'all spent millions of dollars on, and you still got a problem there on Godwin Lane. So y'all need to get another engineering firm or another PE. Thank you, Mr. Bloor. Yeah, and Andrew, we did have that meeting, and you can speak with staff if you'd like to, but so far as I... Joy, would you please come forward, please? So far as I've been told, we are on that timeline. It wasn't, it was never something that was gonna happen overnight. It's been a 26 year problem. It's very complex as you saw from the charts. We had six people, we gave you our complete attention. Um, Joy, do you wanna speak to this? I mean, yes, it's, sir. it's been an ongoing issue and I can sympathize with his plight, but, excuse me, excuse me. I can sympathize with his plight, but the plan is in motion, is it not? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. We have the field work done. Mm -hmm. We are going to wrap up the draft of the survey tomorrow, mm -hmm. just like planned, just like scheduled. We said six to nine months for design, and we're on track. We can't do it overnight. We can't go make it happen. It's on track. Sandbags. What about the sandbags? Yeah. I'll talk to him about the sandbags. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, our, our next speaker, I mentioned the Pace Awards last night. He was actually a recipient of one of the awards as the Advocate Leader uh, of the Year, uh, Brian Wire. So congratulations, Brian. Uh, of course, appreciate all the work you do for our community and uh, glad that it was recognized uh, last night. Thank you, Commissioners. I appreciate that. I really just come before you today for just some awareness and some feedback if possible. Uh, I've been approached by numerous citizens, some of the churches, some of the nonprofits and small businesses are still recovering from Hurricane Sally as far as damages, some insured, some uninsured, and there's been a great need in community for this. Uh, I've been getting some information about a plan for using targeted disaster case management, a group that could possibly come in and look at those uh, individual buildings and businesses and find ways to help find them ways to work with public adjusters to get insurance claims met, or even if no assurance exists, finding ways to help 
get the money to help fix these churches and these nonprofits. But I really just wanted to make sure I understood the, the scope of the issue. I know that the need exists, and I wanted to see from your districts, are you hearing the same issues and problems? It's mainly happening in the underserved communities. Uh, there's some houses and businesses where rain is still coming in from Sally. They're patching it up, but they don't have the means to get the businesses fixed. So I just wanted to kind of get some feedback and thoughts from you, not necessarily in this public forum, but maybe through email or a phone call of how much need you see out there that exists in those communities. The second item was just awareness about the minority contractors uh, process. Uh, I created one for myself for the chamber, and then this quote came to my head. It's the perfection is the, is the uh, challenge of progress sometimes. And I tried to make it perfect, and I had challenges getting it just perfect. So I, I enlisted a partner, Bantu Cola, uh, a company that's going to be involved with helping to be a collection point for all the minority businesses that we have in the county, put the information there, and then from there we can encourage these construction companies, any of the businesses working with the county, to go register with the county. Um, there was a concern earlier in the year that the system we currently use, vendor registry, has some restraints where people have challenges working with that system. I know we're looking at a new system in place, but I want to get the process rolling now to find out who the minority businesses are with the goal of putting them into the uh, new system for the registration in the future. Is there any question I can answer, answer for you about the uh, need for the a plan in place to help some of these businesses and nonprofits out with disaster recovery? Yeah. yeah. Any comments from Commissioner Andrew? Thank you. Uh, Brian, I know that a number of people in my district uh, of all walks of life uh, are struggling with, um, yeah, with non-payment uh, mm -hmm. from the insurance companies. Uh, there's just, uh, we're, we're seeing, yeah, normally right after a storm, you, you, you hear the sound of, uh, of nail guns going off you know, night and day. Uh, that didn't happen this time. Mm. Still a lot of blue roofs uh, out in District 2. Um, a lot of blue roofs because um, the, hold, the, the property owner is still waiting to get paid by the insurance company. So mm. I'd be very interested if you could get with Jonathan on the way out and, uh, and let's get together. I'd like to see what data you're collecting uh, and how that's different uh, or how it dovetails with what I'm seeing. Um, you know, particularly along the, uh, the, the more, um, the, the older homes yes. that are near waterfront. Uh, you know, we have some, some of our, our legacy neighborhoods are near waterfront and, uh, you know, what I'm seeing a lot of, and, uh, Mr. Chairman, make sure that I'm, I took up quite a bit of this time here, but, uh, what I'm seeing is that a lot of those homes, um, you know, they're taking, a, a, you know, maybe a $15,000 roof and they're depreciating it to, to almost zero. And that's really not how insurance is supposed to work, <laughs> you know, uh, the, that the citizens should be prepared to pay the deductible, um, but not a whole lot more than that. Um, you know, an insurance policy that essentially figures out a way to deduct you down to or, or depreciate you down to zero isn't really much of an insurance policy. Right. I am seeing quite a bit of that and hearing a lot of that from customer or from, uh, from citizens in the district. So. Um, you know, if you would touch base with Jonathan, I want to have that conversation and see if you're seeing anything other uh, different. Um, you know, obviously, a family like mine has the resources to go and you know, we've got an attorney and got a, a public adjuster, um, but those are all expenses. And, and quite frankly, I mean, for two college-educated people, um, it's it's confusing and it's a real mm -hmm. pain in the neck. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see kind of what you're seeing uh, from your perspective as well. So Thank you, you for could, that feedback. I really appreciate it, Commissioner yeah. Underhill. If you would meet with me, uh, just get with Jonathan, get on yes. my schedule quickly. And, Thank you. And I, I think other than that, uh, I talked to Jennifer Bobo mm -hmm. with. Uh, um, the CFO Patronus's office. Um, I know she's reached out to us a couple times that if, if we have stories where insurance companies aren't responsive or are doing things that to contact their office, hmm. um, you know, because he over he's he oversees insurance in the state of Florida. Yes. Um, and and so um, as as time has progressed and, and issues start to arise, uh, we hope that citizens don't forget about that that resource um, that they're they're here to to help resolve issues and and advocate. Uh, and have the insurance company do what they need to do. So um, I, I think it's important that we also uh, have people reach out to, to that resource as well. Yeah, from my personal experience, I'm kind of hearing that uh, the contact information that they may get from FEMA or from Brace, it's not getting to some of the people that are m most under, under, underserved and don't have access to the internet, access sure. to, to calling in or just seeing that information. We got to find a way out to reach out to those people and figure out how many we have and what we can do to help yeah. resolve those problems. Commissioner May, do you have anything? Oh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and Brian, congratulations on, on being you. an advocate, uh, getting an advocate award. I mean, it was 
uh, your, your cup runneth over. Uh, <laughs> unfort un <laughs> unfortunately, the citizens that I represent in my district, their cup does not run over. Exactly. Uh, and, and so, uh, uh, by indication today uh, on the dais, uh, many of my colleagues don't see the inequalities that even happen in debris removal mm -hmm. because my district is still uh, uh, un underserved in, in those things. So, I would be uh, uh, very delighted if you would bring the data that represents how people are not receiving services, or rather it be insurance and repairs, and bring that forward uh, so we can have that conversation. And if there's an opportunity for us to bring about equality or equity uh, in what we do as a county, uh, you'll, you'll find my support as an advocate. So I'd be very interested in you bringing that information forward uh, as an advocate uh, for the people who have been left out. I mean, whether it's cleaning up their debris or whether it's taking a blue tarp off of their roof, uh, there are disparities. Uh, on today, I wrote through uh, multiple districts just out of concern to make sure uh, that I was not having an illusion of what's happened in different neighborhoods. And quite frankly, the things that happen in Perdido don't happen in Brownsville, yeah. and they don't happen in Montclair. So I'd be very interested if you'd bring that data forward, and you'd find my support if you would. Yes, sir. I will tell you that in the last rainstorm we had on Sunday, I've heard numerous reports of those underserved individuals with the rain still coming in, patching their roofs, and then it's going to cause problems to get the insurance to fix them later. So it's really sad that this is happening. It's much wider scope. When we start reaching out and have folks reach out on this, it's much wider scope than what I anticipated and what I heard. But I've seen it now, and it's really, truly sad for our, our, our community that those underserved and e even underserved are having challenges this far along in the game after Hurricane Sally. So. Served in Cowtown, Brian, and so I'd, I'd love to have this conversation with you. If you bring it, it's probably we have people who still have blue tarps after Ivan mm -hmm. uh, in Cowtown. If someone watched it, so uh, bring those. And so I think that that is, that is a part of a larger conversation yeah. uh, in, in our underserved community. And you know, I don't care if someone missed a, a FEMA deadline; uh, they don't vote for FEMA. They vote for those of us who sit on this dais. So bring that forward. Yes, sir. I have a targeted proposal from a company in Tallahassee that's willing to come in and do some work with us, and I want to review it and then pass it along to you guys. But they're professionals that handle disaster case management, that hire local contractors to fix the jobs, that hire people and justice insurance people in our community to fix it, but they coordinate all those activities for us. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Tracy McAdams. Uh, speakers, just a reminder, we, uh, the time's on here. It doesn't beep like it used to, so uh, you may just see me ask you to, to try to wrap things up as your time expires. So, Mr. Okay, Chairman, why yes, are you sending, what would it take? I mean, I, and Steve and I have been on this board since 08. And, I mean, we probably spent a million dollars on, you know, voting. And, and those, what does it take for us to get the beep? It'd be a new system, probably. I mean, I, I can. It, it, well, I mean, we've had it, we've had three new systems, but I mean, I think it's fair. Well, I understand this. I mean, I mean this was, this get was a, buzzer? a voting system, and it's a, a management system. I mean, if if you want, I can I can have a timer go off or something. Yeah, let's do that. I'll just, I'll just put my phone on. Well, your phone's fine. Off. I mean, I don't want to utilize your phone for okay. county business, but right. I mean, it'd be well, good if we had a buzzer. One. So, all right, go ahead, uh, Tracy. Tracy McAdams, five zero four four Shandell Drive. This is going to be part one of a multi-part class on Galvez Landing, no tests at the end. Okay, some unique variables about Galvez Landing. There's a significant amount of current that moves either left or right, depending on the day, past the ramp. Boat ramps in lakes and ponds, they typically have no current. Boat ramps in rivers are often built in coves or tributaries where current is, non, is none or minimal. Galvez Landing, however, is built right on the intercoastal waterway. Looking at the image that you just received from Google Earth, if you note where Galvez Landing is located, also note just a few hundred yards to the left or the west, the intercoastal waterway is just over 1.1 miles wide. At Galvez Landing, the waterway narrows to less than a half a mile, and only a few hundred feet to the right or the east, the intercoastal waterway narrows to less than 493 feet. So in other words, the intercoastal waterway rapidly goes from approximately 5,808 feet wide to less than 493 feet wide. And Galvez Landing is located right at the transition to that bottleneck. Because, of the, because the waterway narrows to around 1 12th of its full breadth in this transition point, 
the current becomes much more rapid as the same volume of water is forced through a much narrow, deeper channel. <clears throat> so, I'm getting to my point because I'm running out of time. The, the way the current plan is, it's, a two, it's supposed to be able to launch two boats at one time. Because there is no center pier for, to separate the two launches, that creates a problem with the rapid current. The boats are going to bang into each other. The way you have to swing in to launch and retrieve your boat is already a trick. With that current, it makes it even trickier. So we need that, that, third, that, that third pier there, one on each side and one in the middle. That is not in the current design. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, Richard Moore. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Moore. I reside at 8811 Saltgrass Drive here in Pensacola. I'm here to speak about OLF-8. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, coming out here and doing a lot of work. Uh, obviously, you've got a lot on your plates, and um, you're probably going to have a lot more. But the, uh, the thing is, there's a perception, and it's not a small perception, I don't believe, that you aren't really listening. Um, I think there's a perception out here that, according uh, to OLF-8 and the plans that have been put forth so far, a good number of you guys have already made a decision on what you want to see, and you really haven't seen it yet, nor can you get people to agree on it. I don't like that. That's not representative government, but uh, that's the perception. And I think that if you went out there and stood on Frank Reader Road, and notice that the developments all around there, I mean, it's, the expansion is just humongous. And then consider that you're gonna put a, a grocery distribution center or something of that ilk there, and it's gonna improve the quality of life for people there. It's gonna improve the security of the children that are playing around that area, and it's going to at least sustain whatever traffic that's there now, I, I think that's a pipe dream. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think you're, reasonably I'm sure that everybody here wants to work for the benefit of everybody, uh, all the people, but I don't think that the direction that you're headed right now is the right one. And unfortunately, it seems like it's a done deal in many cases. Uh, you're looking at plans now to reduce the uh, the, the uh, green belt or the park area between uh, the developments and the Frank Reader and the uh, OLF-8. That's not a good plan, and I just don't think that you, you might hear, but you're not really listening. You're, I mean, it's not coming in and getting through, okay? It's, it's not a good plan, and I think that anybody that considers that if you have a commerce center and you're trying to attract business that's not how you're going to attract business you're going to attract business by giving them uh, tax credits and things of that nature uh, talk to people about coming in the area most businesses are going to decide that they want to go somewhere because that's where they want to go they've got people there that know how to do whatever it is they want to do if they want to go there they're going to go find property if they don't find vacant property, they'll buy other places and then tear them down and build what they want. Example is uh, the hospital going up there off of uh, 110. So in any event, please consider this more than what you apparently have uh, in the public's best interest. Thank you. Sorry, John Callis. John Callis, I live in Nature Trail. I am more than disappointed that this board does not appear to hear 
or care about the recommendations of the proven expert DPZ management team, and you're not listening to the residents' desires as expressed to that team and to you through these public forums. We care about how much our homes will be worth in the future. We've said we want to have our most preferred amenities nearby. We care about limiting traffic growth. And we don't want a commerce park or a section of land on Nine Mile Road dedicated in perpetuity as a commerce park. Our expectation is that you're here to represent us, yet we don't feel that you're listening. Because if you were listening to us and to DPZ, the obvious compromise between the extremes of the village plan on one end and the commerce plan on the other is the market plan. These and other issues are staring you in the face right now. We should get back to the market plan. It was clearly supported by the data DPZ brought forward and is the one that not only fulfills your original stated goals, but also makes our county a more desirable place to live and work and enjoy being a part of. We just need three of you to care enough to support the facts for the betterment of Escambia County. The high paying clean jobs desired could include such things as cybersecurity, a field Pensacola has a jump start on between our regional colleges and military training sites. It fits, it can work, and I'm sure there are many other fields that can work and even provide skill building training opportunities for our very own while attracting other skills from outside our area. The market plan fits. Embarking on such satisfactorily entices successful growth-oriented companies. Surely you can see we're making OLF8 a place where people enjoy living can make the job of recruiting good-paying employers a lot easier. What you decide to do at OLF8 matters. It matters to your success and it darn sure matters to us. Listen, we're the residents. The DPC team knows what they're doing. Listen. That's all. Thank you, John. Uh, Marilee Gill. Hi, my name is Marilee Guile. I live at 8861 Foxtel Loop in Nature Trail. We went through the whole scenario of what we wanted to do with OLF8, and we want the market. We do not want a hybrid. We do not want a commerce park. And that's the bottom line as far as many of us are concerned. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa Blackwell. Good afternoon, Commissioner Teresa Blackwell. I live in Beulah. I'm gonna start by giving Commissioner Burgosh the rare compliment. I can see her listening to people, which I appreciate. Um, DPZ has been more than accommodating in listening to you. Now you need to listen to us, the residents of Beulah. In nine days of charrettes where, our, where countywide residents listened and used that information to cast informed votes, the least dense village plan, plan came in first. But as we heard in the charrette Tuesday night, later voting brought the market plan up to first choice. Commercial real estate, oh, I'm sorry there. Push that down. More than 200 participants once again voted the market plan their first choice by far at 68%. It is the one DPZ continues to recommend. The district, district one commissioner has consistently downplayed the expertise and impugned the integrity of probably the best master planner in the world for what we need, as well as the significance of what hundreds of his constituents have said repeatedly after taking the time to get better informed on the issue, 
More than 200, more than 2,000 opinions are not enough for him if they are not his own. Yet he would elevate the comment of one person who agreed with him in his blog. He clings to the outdated vision of a dozen or so heavy com campaign contributors who want to profit at the expense of Beulah. Jim Cronley already has visions of rows of food distribution docks and 10 warehouses with low paying stocking jobs that will soon go to robots. To clarify another blog point, the two to three stories DPC mentioned Tuesday was only for residential above the 35 acres of retail. Commercial real estate developers speaking in Atlantic real estate show said they make their living from the residential above, not the retail below, so they need density. I appreciate that Commissioner Bender was likely trying to keep the project on track with his meeting, but no representative of county residents, no less Beulah residents, was at the table when two of the old power structure economic development men and Navy Federal bargained for what they wanted. Residents share interests with Navy Federal and their great partners, but they were outnumbered. That was not a fair in the sunshine way to settle Beulah's future reject the adjusted hybrid plan conceived behind closed doors and get back to the market plan. For heaven's sake, give the K through H school board the 25 acres they need for a school. We can create a place that people as well as great business will love, but only if you have the courage to do what is not only best for Beulah, but what will benefit the county as well. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm just going to sure. speak to that just a little bit since I was mentioned in there. And first, first off, Teresa, I, I'm not impugning anyone's reputation. Um, we unfortunately there were some emails that were sent, and I've got every single one of them, and I've gone through them all, and I saw some things that were quite disturbing to me. And I'm going to speak out about it. We are the client. We are DPZ's client. When they send invoices, we pay them. We have an agreement with it. No, I'm, I don't need you to come up. I'm going to tell you. We have an MOU with Navy Federal. This is good information so people can understand what's going on. We have an MOU with Navy Federal Credit Union. Under strict stipulations, they will reimburse. Right now, so far as I know, they've paid about 340 grand. Uh, we're close to a million in invoices, and the county has put out over 700,000. There's no guarantee that Navy Federal will continue to pay if they don't get exactly what they want. Now, disturbingly, in those emails, there were, there were items, there were meetings planned where members of that DPZ team were copied when, they, when, they, when the goal was stated that the goal was to embarrass this board and discredit any kind of commerce. And I'm sorry, Teresa, don't come to the board. Don't come to the podium. You're done. Ter I'm, Teresa, you're, I'm putting the facts out. Yeah. You're talking about me. I, I, but Teresa, I talking you're talking, your time's up, Teresa. Your time He's is up. He's talking about me. Teresa, I please, didn't mention you. Teresa, please sit down. Emails were sent to our consultant. Remember, we are the client saying, we want to embarrass them, we want to discredit the commerce. And our county staff was not notified. A tremendous lapse in integrity. You can shake your head if you want. That's the facts, I've seen the email. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little concerned, and I'm concerned when I see that they want to stack 60 units per acre in massive apartment complexes on that field. That's, that was what they recommended. Thankfully, staff pushed back immediately. Here's the thing. In November of 2018, this board made a compromise. It was going to be a commerce park, but this board made a compromise. The compromise was, we will look at all options, we'll do a mixed unit development, and I signed off on that compromise. But behind the scenes, there has been a push to undermine the compromise and push for massive traffic exacerbating, high intensity, residential, high scale uh, re rental apartments on that field. And I just disagree with that. I disagree with that. We have so much, you live out, I've lived out there 17 years. And let me just tell you, there is so much residential going in already. There's a massive apartment complex going right across the street from Navy Federal. It's called Inspire. You can literally walk across a crosswalk. There's another one right directly to the east. It's called the residences at Pebble Creek, or Nature Creek. Massive condos, townhomes. So, I, I have been, from the get-go, opposed to any residential on that field. Now, with that said, I understand I voted for the compromise. There will be a compromise. There will be more than likely some residential. But does it have to be 60 units per acre on up to a third of the field? I won't support that. That's too 
much. You talk about traffic problems, that would be a disastrous nightmare like you would never believe. So there was that push behind the scenes. I've seen it in the emails. Beyond that, we've asked for additional emails. We haven't been given them yet, Teresa. So I'm not impugning anyone's reputation. I see emails that concern me, and I have a duty to speak out about it, which I will do. Now, getting back to what's important to people that live in Beulah, like me, 17 years right across the street. I want good things for the community too. I've said it over and over like a broken record. I want to see parks. I met with the superintendent of schools yesterday and the school board member. I want to work with them on their school needs. Remember, I proposed a K-8 school on that field in 2013. You can look that up online, that's a fact. Um, they went with a different plan, but whatever. So I don't think it's a bad idea. I just, do they need 25 acres? That's the question I have. So I'm willing to compromise parks, Restaurants, of course, I've said it over and over. Right now, hot food options in Beulah are Tom Thumb and Circle K. Roller hot dogs, microwave burritos. I want restaurants, I want retail, I want a park, all of the above. There's enough room on that field for us all to get a win. I keep saying this every time. But when I see behind the scenes that our county and our county consultant is copied with emails where they want to embarrass us, we're up here working and we are listening. We're listening and we're working. But it's, it's hard not to get upset about that when our consultant did not inform the board about those uh, plans and our county staff was not invited to meetings and our county consultant was working with people who are directly opposed to what we're trying to do up here with economic development. So yeah, I am concerned. We are the client and I, I do have ongoing continuing concerns. But with, with all of that said, we're listening. We're going to look at the final plans and here's the bottom line. There's, not, there's no one that's going to get 100% of what they want. Not me as a resident across the street, not you, not Nature Trail, not Navy Federal, nobody. It's called a compromise. We're all going to get some things we like, and I'm going to push for that. We're all going to get some things specifically we don't like. That's what happens. But never forget the fact this county spent $18 million, not District 1 money, not Beulah money, money from each man's district up here to create jobs. And I'm going to vote to create jobs on that field. Doesn't mean we're not going to have uh, amenities as well, but I'm not going to just back away from jobs. And here's another thing. I'm sick of people saying, well, you could get 1,000 jobs on 80 acres. How about this? How many acres does it take for you to get your amenities? Why do we have to shrink the main reason that we acquired that property? Why do we have to shrink that goal? Again, it's going to be a compromise. So to say I'm impugning anyone's reputation is not true. And so anytime someone says that, I'm going to push back. The fact of the matter is, these emails are concerning. I've requested the rest of them. I've requested the text messages. Other, my other counterparts have requested them too, and we haven't got them. That's where we're at in this process. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Gosh, I mean, obviously, uh, I followed your predecessor before you uh, because it was your district. Um, a quick question. Are we in jeopardy of not being reimbursed by Navy Federal? Is that? What I'm hearing from you, I mean, that, that would be very, very alarming if that's the case. I, I don't think there's a guarantee we're going to get. Yeah. I mean, re, you got to read the MOU. <clears throat> they Have specifically they stated that has, has there been any know. indication uh, to staff that they're not going to pay it? If, if I may. So, yeah, so, so that was that was why I I, I had Navy Federal there at, at the meeting uh, two or three weeks ago or whatever was was to, to to talk with them about the hybrid plan that was presented to us by DPZ. And to see if that was that was something that they had issue with, or if it if it uh, was something that they could agree with. Um, so. To well, I mean, the payment payment of the invoice is not contingent upon it, the plan it, it that is. it's presented. They, it is. The, well, the, it, well it, we it, need to stop plan, today. Well, the plan has to go back to them uh, to to have them uh, see if they they approve it or not. And, so, if they don't like the plan, then they're not going to pay for. They won't pay the last invoice. They won't pay the and and really we we. Oh, well, that's out on disingenuous. It. Well, that's very disingenuous. Again, Lumen, this is why I had them at the table. Yeah. Was because they're the next step to find out: are, are we headed in the right direction, or or do we need to, you know, go back? And so, uh, like again, they were the next step in the process. Right. Jeff, I understand. You know, I mean. And oh, oh, so, oh, Bender, I, uh, Robert, I understand exactly what you're saying, but it's disingenuous for you to tell me to get someone to give a plan, and if they don't come back with. The resolution that I want, then I'm not going to pay for it because it's supposed to be a plan. In that case, I'm not going to let somebody hold me hostage with a gun. So we'll cut bait and we'll let's let's go shop today. I mean, I'm just, that's where I am. There's no way that I'm going to say you know it's contingent upon what they bring back. I want DBZ to bring back the very best possible plan, whatever it is. I don't know, but I mean I'm not going to fire somebody because they come back and a consultant tells me what I don't want to hear. 
And that's, I, this is the first I've heard that. And, and Jeff, I'm alarmed and I'm concerned. And you find me supporting you, pay for it ourselves. Yeah. And, and I'll start over before I let someone hold me hostage that's because exactly they don't like the I'm results. Do. I mean, that's not, I'm not going to be supportive of that. So look, I want to be a partner with Navy Federal. Great company. I've been a member for 40 years, since 1981. But again, these emails are alarming to me. I see some, I see some things in there that really concern me. I would like to keep them in the game in the spirit of working collaboratively. And I'm hoping, here's the thing, uh, Lumen, I'm hoping we can hit the sweet spot, that we can find something that we can oh, I, I, don't, I don't care what the result, yeah, it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you like it or whether yeah. Robert likes it or Doug. Or see. But if, but if, if they the result walk away. is what the citizens like and what they present, and yeah. even if we don't accept their plan, yeah. it's not a, a negotiable item that they don't pay for a commitment that they made. Whereas it could be that I didn't like the type of job that they created, so I wanted to renege on the obligation that we did on e dates and the ten exactly. million that we gave them. Yeah, that's right. not the way it worked. No, I'm, I mean I'm with we're, you. We're, we're 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 in a partnership of a lot of money uh, with Navy Federal, and this is the first I've heard of that, Jeff. And yeah, I think that, that that's unfair. I don't care what the results are. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not really getting into the weeds. That's mm -hmm. on on you, but they can come back and say it's all residential. That's fine. They can come back and say it's all industrial. That's fine. That's up to consultant. But mm -hmm. we shouldn't influence the consultants on their pay. Exactly. To decide exactly. what resolution or final product they bring forth. I and mean, that's why we need independent of no influence on what yeah. they bring back. And that's why we need the rest of these emails and, and text messages to figure that all out. But at the end of the day, they're going to stay with us until they jump off the train. And then if they if they don't if they don't agree to the commitment, I'll fund it myself out of my discretionary. Because like you, Lumen, I'm not going to vote for something just so they can make a final payment of a couple hundred grand. And again, am I right on my on the repayment? Janice, have they paid us the second repayment yet? So, um, as we mentioned the other day, they are they owe us 50% up through phase three uh -huh. on up to $1 million on the contract that was negotiated, the contract that was negotiated. Put it in layman's terms. They've paid how much so far? They're, they're going to have paid with this invoice $631,000. Well, how much have they paid? So, so. How much have they paid right now? It's 434. And how much are, are we out? 700? Well, right now, we're, the invoice that they have is another $275,000 to pay. Right. So the total that we have had billed is 699. And how much has the county paid already? The 699,943. 699, so look. So we'll be about $60,000 off. For my vote on this board, on this dais, I'm going to vote for what the best plan is for the constituents I represent. And it's not 200. It's 62,000 in District 1, 315,000 in this district. And if Navy Federal wants to work with us and make the final payment, I hope that they will. But if they don't, I'll fund it myself. I will not be like you, Lumen. I will not be held hostage. I just want to make that on the record. We will, I will vote for the best plan. And if Navy Federal doesn't like it, they can walk away from the deal and not pay. That's where I'm at. Uh, so again, that was a lot of what I was trying to, to, to resolve with the, so with the conversation. Um, based, and again, looking at the plan that, that DPZ presented to us on the hybrid plan, mm -hmm. and uh, Navy Federal seemed very supportive of that, of that plan. It had a lot of what they were looking for, um, and which I thought was important to know as, as we moved forward. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, and for the record, I mean, it was Scott Luth that said, hey, I, I probably don't need that commerce uh, on, the, on the frontage of Nine Mile. It would probably be a better connector, a better gateway to the Navy Federal Campus if that was some other type of use. Sure. Um, and, um, and I think that, that's favorable for, for Navy Federal and, and what they plan to do with their, their property. Um, and, and so, but yeah, based on the MOU is, is why the, that was called to make sure that we, we had a path forward beyond uh, what, what we were going. Right. And Robin, that's a bad negotiating. That. I mean, whoever negotiated, I don't know who negotiated. That you negotiate payment based on uh, anticipated or expected outcomes of what I want it to be. That's a bad contract. I mean, I, I don't want staff or a consultant to come tell me exactly what I want to hear. I want them to come and tell me what's best for this county. Correct. Correct. So, all right. Uh, Christina Force. No, I didn't let it go. Uh, Christina Fortson, I live on Rebel Road in Beulah. And my head's spinning right now because of all that stuff y'all just said, because it really kind of went over my head a little bit. However, we're also part of the people who are going to have to live with whatever the decision is based on these plans. 
I don't see that the hybrid plan was actually a compromise because there's now 270 acres devoted to commerce when it started off with 92 or something like that with the market plan. The market plan was the one that DPZ recommended. The market plan was the one that Beulah voted for. The market plan was the one that everybody really liked. And could everybody, I think even, I mean, even with the commerce, I mean, I understand there's gotta be commerce, just like you have to understand there's gotta be housing, but it's just so, I can't stand to see people argue about something that can be amicably resolved because it's not like we're not all adults and we can't go in here and say, this is what we want, and we know this is not going to be the ideal, but let's see what we can come to midway. But to me, going from 90 acres of um, commerce to 270 acres of commerce was just a huge jump on that hybrid plant. That was just a really big jump. That's, I mean, that's three times as much acreage as they recommended to start with on the market plan. So just keep that in mind, please, because I think the, I think the hybrid plan needs reworking still. I don't know. I'm not DPZ. I'm not... I'm not that kind of person, but I'm just a resident of Beulah who is telling y'all that we have valid concerns. And I had people who were coming with me tonight, but they backed out. And I don't know why they did, but they did. But there are more than just a handful of us that are concerned about this. But I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you. Sure. And, and Christina, just for that, I mean, that's why we put the flex in there, so that it would back out some if, if it wasn't used. Um, and, you know, and if you think of, of what the commerce plan was originally presented, I mean, that was all 440 acres or, you know, out of the 540 acres that, that, the, that remains on the site. I mean, that, so, um, you know, I, I would say it is a little bit of a, of a compromise. Maybe it, it is a little commerce heavy, um, but, you know, it, it didn't include the full 25 acres at the school board that, you know, I had the same meeting Jeff had after. Um, and so it, it could be that that eats into, into some of that 273 if they need to expand. Um, and, and I think one thing that, that um, sometimes gets glossed over is that this is out of the, the 440-ish acres of developable land. And so that still leaves about 100 acres of um, that in the plane that are for trails and for other things that, um, so just, just because you see a, that 45 acres in parks and common, you know, recreational use, there's still that other 100 acres that, that's not being factored into that. Um, so, um, and, I, and, you know, I've heard it's, it's beautiful in there with, you know, the, the, the creeks running through there. And so uh, I think we can not necessarily develop those, but develop those into public amenities with a walking trail. We can add those types of amenities in those acreage. Um, so, you know, develop them into public use and not develop, actually develop them. So um, I think it's just part to, to point out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Zachary Campbell. My name is Zachary Campbell. I live on Frank Reader Road. And I couldn't help but notice on the way down here, going down Palafox, just how crowded it was and how many people were out on the sidewalk eating and walking around and shopping and my wife and I have done that as well. It's a destination. And it's got those walking amenities. And when baseball season starts, you could eat down here, maybe walk down to the ballpark and catch a game, that kind of thing. And in traveling around to see grandkids, I go to uh, Huntsville, I go to Birmingham, and I have a, a crew in Seattle, Washington. And one of the things that's impressed me is um, <clears throat> Birmingham. I've got, uh, I've got three of them up there, and they play soccer, they play lacrosse, they play football, they play baseball. And there are a couple of facilities that we go to that probably take up 10 acres, and you can see three sports going on at the same time. And if you wanted to, you could walk to restaurants and shops or just lounge around. And... I guess what I'm, what I'm imploring you guys to do is, now if I understood you right, uh, Mr. Chairman, you said those flex parts of the hybrid plan are not designated as commercial. In other words, they could be amended. Is that what you were implying? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, after a certain number of years, if they haven't been developed on as commercially, then, then we can change those to a different use. Yes, sir. 
So right now they are part of the 273. I, um, it, it was, and, and that's that's why we had the phases in there and the, and the timelines to show when uh, each each portion or each, or a certain part of the commerce would 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 come up for discussion to talk about: Do we continue to leave it as commerce, or or does it get uh, uh, reassigned into to be aimed, developed into something else? Okay, I would. Uh... Gosh, I'd like to see that in writing because it's scary. That hybrid plan scares me. I live, my land borders that. And that's scary to think that there could be a grocery distribution center, a trucking depot there. And when on my drive down here, I, I saw a, a place you could call a destination. And I would implore the commission to think in those terms because whatever happens, it's going to define Beulah forever. OLF is the last big piece of property I think that can be used to create an identity and a destination, not a depot. Thank you. And, and if, I, if I may, I mean, that's, that's still available there. And I, I, I think um, uh, I've gone to Google Earth and, and, and laid over the number of acres that that would be over downtown um it's it's you'd be surprised how much that really covers i, mean, I think that destination is still an option uh, i think that's what the hybrid plan presents uh, and that's why there's some residential included to to support that so um i, I mean that and that's um it, it really is shocking when you when you overlay that to see how big that acreage really is when you overlay it to, to Pensacola. So uh, downtown, I, I mean, this this is a huge site. And so um, I, I, I honestly think that, that what you're asking for, for the, what the residents of Beulah are asking for are, are included in this. Um, and and again, it gives it the flexibility to, to change later. Um, and it's, it is a long way out probably before anything would really happen out there. Thank you. Uh, Cecilia Campbell. My name's Cecilia Campbell. I live on Frank Reader Road. Um, the board did not hear this, but the planning board did. Uh, I come from a, um, a, a, long, a long history of uh, skeptical <laughs> concerns when it comes to a board of county commissioners. My mother was a county commissioner's secretary. She worked in civil service. She ended up, after uh, being um, Grady L. Britton and Jack Kenney's um, secretary. She ended up being uh, the sec administrative secretary to the competency board. So I, I have heard these dinner table conversations about some of the things that have gone on. Now, I'm not saying that I'm skeptical of all of you. Um, I, t I taught WD's daughter. I taught Zero Lancaster's son uh, in music. And um, I'm not trying to degrade the integrity of all of you, but I'm just saying I have seen enough in not only my childhood, but uh, in my, my adult life where some really good things went really bad. You know, I was, uh, I remember as a uh, young teen riding my horse in competition on that awesome arena that we finally got. We went from a backyard in Beulah to uh, uh, down the way from, across from Lipscomb, had a wonderful uh, arena there that suddenly was gone. The soccer field that my uh, son was on, playing on, and uh, some just wonderful amenities there that can disappear. I was also a 4-H, um, chartered two different 4-H clubs, and I saw what could happen to 4-H property when we thought we were gonna get the equestrian center right there, and lo and behold, someone else had some just the right piece of property over on Mobile Highway, and then the rest is history. You know, the 4-H club and our beautiful, I mean, it was just awesome. I mean, even during Ivan, they had a sawmill out there. You know, um, just as a 4-H leader, it was very disappointing. I've seen what can happen when people have another, another plan in mind. Um, and I have seen two different red herrings thrown out here. You know, I'm sorry, but I have read, I remember, Teresa sending me a copy saying, look, I need to separate myself. We cannot say these things, you know, and I need to tag uh, Marina on this. And 
yes, my name is on some of those emails, but it's a red herring. What is the point? Yes, we thought we had permission to talk to those people. They were awesome. I remember getting a, an email from uh, Travis at uh, like 9 o'clock in the morning. Look, I need a balanced voice. I need someone who's not all this way or all that way. I need a balanced voice because Channel 3 wants to talk to somebody. Sure, come on out. Clean off the front porch. Come on. Uh, yes, my, e my email address is tagged on that. Y'all, I mean, the, when I say it's a red herring, and now today, oh, DPZ is not going to, uh, uh, Navy Federal is not going to pay DPZ. Really? Is that conjecture or is it in writing? I mean, seriously? I trust the DPZ out of, after my skeptical background of seeing things go very badly, you know, from my adult, all through my adult life. I trusted them. I am not an expert. And some things have been really misconstrued about property values. And I know firsthand about children having to move out of Beulah to Phillipsville, Alabama, to get enough land for a few horses. And I can tell you about property values. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, they, I want to finish one sentence about this. This is my last chance to talk. That someone who has a quarter of an acre, and believe me, I've done, I, I, my mother passed away, okay? We were, I had a cousin move, moving here. I know a lot about real estate, and I know that the realtor, um, I'm sure that uh, Commissioner Barry can, knows what I'm talking about. If you have a, a quarter of an acre that sells for $85,000, when on a five acre parcel, the best you're going to get is 40000 We took it to the planning board. We wanted to sell one acre because my mother was dying in um, an assisted living facility. And the planning board is set up for big money, for contractors, not a family trying to sell one acre to keep her mother alive in a nursing home. Thank you, Ms. So Campbell. property values are a big Thank joke. You. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Mr. Commissioner. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, Ms. Campbell, one thing, that, I mean, regardless of what else you might have heard here, uh, Navy Federal Credit Union is a very, very professional organization. Um, they will, uh, there's absolutely nothing at all that indicates that they are going to violate the written agreement that was signed by this board Thank and you. by them. Thank I, you. I, know, I hear, I'm I mean, I hear a lot clarified. of stuff, but uh, <laughs> the, the agreement is the agreement, and there shouldn't be any question about what the agreement is because everybody who sits on this board signed on to that agreement. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I've never heard one bit of a hint from Navy Federal that they uh, intended that they have any plans or desire to uh, to violate that agreement. So um, it was a good agreement at that time. It's a great agreement now. Um, so I, I what, don't don't let that there's a lot to be stressed about, but don't let that stress you. Well, I'm sure that everyone here who has heard this. Oh, my goodness. You know, that outrage, that's just, when I say a red herring, it's like, really, why would you even say something like that? Yeah, the, Thank the you for clarifying that. I'm sure the people online want to, uh, want to hear that. Yeah, the Thank stipulations you. that Navy Federal put into the contract uh, are very clear. Uh, they're, they're in writing, they're black and white, and, uh, and as long as the contract follows, the, follows those stipulations, uh, I don't think we have, that, have to stress on that. So, Thank you. thanks. Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to weigh in on that because, of course, they wouldn't be violating their agreement. Their agreement specifically gives them an out if they don't like the plan. So I've never said they were going to violate the agreement. I'm just, I've, I've said there's no guarantee they're going to pay us the full reimbursement because that's what their that's, agreement stipulates, that's what it Doug. Sounded like. So, yeah, it, it's, it wouldn't be a violation. Pay. If they said, we don't like what you guys are doing, yep. it's in our agreement. They don't have to pay, right? So that's all I'm saying. There is no guarantee that they will pay the full amount because their agreement stipulates that. All right? All right. Well, that's uh, Jack, not what I just heard Commissioner Underhill say. It because sounded like we yeah. had a tight contract. He was contract. saying something. Yeah. You, you, please go ahead and sit down. Thank you. Uh, Jacqueline Rogers. Thank you. Um, my notes were a little more positive. I just want to put in context that embarrassed comment because it was said a long time ago and it was said publicly. It wasn't just said in private emails. It was that you guys didn't let them go through the first presentation and that you should be embarrassed that you were unprofessional. I am copied in a lot of emails and so are you because I see all your names on them where people lie about me, copy me in and copy you in and no one goes back and says, you shouldn't say those things about Jacqueline Rogers. I take it on the chin, you guys should take it on the chin. Not one of you commissioners are paying with your personal money. You're paying with taxpayer money. That means 
We are the clients too. We are the stakeholders. Now back to the positive part of this is I've always been an ad advocate for quality of life in the rural areas. So I want to stand behind Beulah for what they want. Let's continue, Chairman, on that collaborative path of master planning. That public Zoom meeting was very good. I was very skeptical because of the format of it. They stayed hours so they would answer all those questions, and I was very impressed with that. 200 people attending a meeting is something. There's probably not 200 people here, but that doesn't mean that every issue that you talk about tonight might not be important to someone. It's a 20-year-old plan that sometimes needs adjustment. Every one of you have voted against the sector plan and wanted to opt people out because you said things change, ideas change. So why can't this plan change? We know that you don't follow plans just because of history. The community had plans, they wanted the, um, the village plan, now they're compromising to the market plan. The hybrid plan is not the compromise. The community needs school property. 25 acres is the minimum. It probably should be more than that. Pace is building a K through eight school. They just got property for it. It was 24.5 acres. So that's not unreasonable. The homes on Frank Reader need to have their characters of their home protected. DPZ indicated that that's possible. So that needs to be arranged. So those homes that are there have like uses on the other side. And that's not a hard thing to do. The last thing I want to say is, um, this is unrelated to OLF, I just wanted to say in District 5, north of the paper mill, we still have construction debris on our street. Granted, we didn't get as much damage as Perdido, and so I know it's not a priority. Roads Inc. did a great job on the vegetative degree, debris, but the um, other construction debris is still there, so I'm just giving you another data point. I don't think it was discriminatory. I just don't think it was a lot for them to pick up. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Melissa Pino. Thank you, Chairman Bender. Melissa Pino, um, 413 Southeast Boblitz, candidate for D2 commissioner. I so want these residents to have some amenities and I know why their heart is breaking for them. And it's so ironic to me that we live in Navy Point where we've just caught 68 townhomes in the middle of our neighborhood, no surprise. We've been waiting for it to drop. We would die for some of the amenities that I really want these people to have. It just blows my mind that while our neighborhood is screaming, we have to fight these townhomes and I'm saying, we can't fight these townhomes, nobody wants it, and yet for some reason the people that want the amenities are also screaming for this residential. I don't get it. But uh, Commissioner Bergash, there are still a bunch of people back here who think that, that you're lying about the MOU. And so uh, the county attorney can clear it up. She's sitting right there. So, you know, no, they don't have to pay. It's written in the MOU. Now, do you remember, let's flash back to a year ago where I said it is the worst idea ever to have Navy Federal pay for the $1 million in master planning. Doug is going to tank the scores for DPZ, and Navy Federal is going to lobby to get a bunch of residential in there. And that is exactly what happened. How on earth? did you guys get stuck then with an MOU that Navy Federal doesn't have to pay? How did it even happen? But that is exactly what happened, right? Um, I want to change gears for a minute to something that happened. I was originally going to talk to county staff because we've, we're losing another senior county staff who got whacked. Uh, I think recently that's been about five for a cumulative of about 125 years of institutional knowledge in this county. Somebody needs to look into it, and, and I'm continuing to look into it. Speaking to what the exchange that happened between Commissioner Underhill and Brian Wire, where he directed Mr. Wire to get with Jonathan so Doug can collect uh, stats on insurance. Commissioner Underhill, it's nice that you're getting involved in the back end while you're fighting your own insurance company over insurance on your house. Where were you post Sally? We got nothing in District 2, not a single water distribution, not a single food distribution other than what the churches could scrape together. I begged on my hands and knees for some of those poor neighborhoods. The only distribution center was down in Perdido Key. And now you're worried about it? To fill the gap, 
I enlisted the help of Michelle Salzman, David Baer, Chip Simmons, um, C Commissioner May showed up. I donated a bunch of money. A lot of people donated money. It was bipartisan. Diane Crummel came down. And we put on a distribution at the Walmart for the people in Forest Creek because you were nowhere there. And now you're worried about these, these people challenged post-Sally? I doubt it. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I just want to, I want to go back to the MOU with Navy Federal just because there's some folks that are maybe late to the game. The reason that that whole ha thing happened, Melissa, was I had a $1.5 million project uh, for that field, and Navy Federal volunteered. They stepped up and said, listen, we know that you're short. We were short on the STRO space project. So what this board did was we took my $1.5 million that had been out there for master planning, and we applied that toward the airport project, the jobs project. And I was very proud to do that. And Navy Federal stepped up with this MOU. Is it perfect? No. We went back and forth negotiating, back and forth, back and forth. You know, they're, they're paying based on phases, and they've paid thus far. Right now, we're waiting for another payment. But again, I, we just have to make it crystal clear. That's a big uh, company. They're very, very sophisticated. And obviously, they have a big interest. And I, I get it. They put $1.2 billion, $1.2 billion in facilities out there. They're going to have 10,000 employees, half a billion dollar payroll. They get a lot of deference. They deserve it. They're a huge community partner. And I, I, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't interject right here that, uh, sadly, there's a lot of folks out in Beulah that don't like Navy Federal. It's a smaller, shrinking number, but it's not insignificant. They wish that Navy Federal had never uh, come out there and changed the way of life. Of course, I can't have a rational conversation with people like that because I believe Navy Federal was the biggest Grand Slam home run this community has ever got. It's like two Grand Slams back to back for a batter. That's how good it is. So they stepped up. And, you know, obviously the MOU, anyone can read it. It's a public document. You know, they have benchmarks, and they're looking for certain things. And we voted, DPZ won the contest. Where I kind of took a, a detour is when I found these emails where there was discussions behind the scenes where the county staff was specifically excluded. I still have concerns about that. And to say it's a red herring um, is just not accurate. That's not apt. When a member of our team, because DPZ is our team, again, we're the client. I have to say that over and over. Uh, like I said, there's a separate MOU. There's no guarantee that Navy Federal will pay because they don't have to uh, per the MOU they negotiated. So our consultant, DPZ, was copied on emails where they said, we don't want commerce. We, we want to embarrass the commissioners. Let's go write letters to the editor. Let's embarrass them. People have the right to say whatever they want. But when they copied our consultant, our consultant had a duty an obligation, an ethical obligation to contact staff and say, hey, wait a minute, let's take a step back. You're the client, you know, there's, you got an issue brewing. Let's, they didn't, they did not tell us in real time. It would not have been found had we not done a public records request. So that's where we're at on this situation. So I wanna work with them. We all not, no one on this board, no one on this dais wants to bring this thing in for a landing more than I do. Um, but we're gonna do it the right way. And we're gonna look at the text messages and we'll look at the, the other things that we've requested that we haven't got yet because it has to be a fair process. God bless Navy Federal, we love them, but they don't get to put their thumb on the scale and fill that field with a bunch of 60 dwelling units per acre, high intensity residential, just because they want it. I'm not gonna vote for that. And if they, if, they, if they decide they don't wanna pay, they have the option not to, and I'll cover the difference whatever they decide not to do. But we're gonna have a good plan on that field. It's gonna be a compromise, everyone's gonna get a win, Nobody's gonna get everything they want. And more importantly, we're all gonna have some things we don't want, right? That's the way a compromise works. Sure. Thank you. Um, and for anyone interested, the, the MOU, um, it was in the backup on April 4th, 2019. It's, it's a county attorney report 3-7. Um, so if, if you have any interest in going to look at it, it's from the April 4th meeting, 2019. And, um, and, um, or, or request it, and we'll be happy to, to send it to you. Uh, Karen Sindel. Commissioners, as chair of the Florida West Board of Directors, I would like to take a moment to share a few thoughts regarding our progress and continued efforts for economic development. Our board is comprised of community and corporate representatives dedicated to recruiting viable economic growth opportunities for our county. These efforts include strengthening our entrepreneurs, recruiting new business, working with elected leadership, 
to return our tax dollars from Tallahassee to local projects, as well as meeting with the building blocks of our workforce, our education system. Moving forward, I respectfully request that you consider the following. An overall strategic plan for economic growth that would include funding new infrastructure as well as improving existing. Currently, these planning needs are often handled as an as-needed basis, which slows the decision-making process and creates a loss of opportunity. We need, to be, we need to be willing to publicly ask the hard questions. Critical issues such as the protection of our military base, not just against a BRAC hearing, but what is being done to protect, ensure, and encourage future military missions? Do we have strong land development protections in place to allow that growth? Based on decisions made by the planning board in the past few years, I would say no, we do not. Florida West has initiated a plan to recruit cybersecurity jobs to our area. With that effort, we also need to grow our local talent into the workforce needed to fill these jobs. But to succeed at this task, we will need solutions to the long-lasting education issues and inequalities in our county. We often hear from this board that you would like more jobs for the citizens in your districts. My question is, do you want more jobs in your district or do you want the citizens in your district to have more employment opportunities? Different statements with different missions. And yet another indicator as to the need for a strategic plan that would unite the wants and needs of the entire county. The ability for citizens to publicly participate in the discussion process for OLFA has been unprecedented and greatly appreciated. As commissioners, you were elected to represent these citizens. However, they did not abdicate their right to voice their opinions and be included in the discussion process. The development of OLFA will have economic impacts which will survive long past the decision makers. It is easily understood why the citizens are concerned, often critical, <laughs> emotional and quite vested in the outcome. To find the balance between growth, economic opportunities, and quality of life is never simple. You have been provided with input from professional planners, citizens, and business representatives. Whatever path this board chooses, knowing you have listened to all the stakeholders is significant and you are to be commended. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve my community as one of your appointed volunteers to the Florida West Board. And now, it is time for another citizen to step up and continue the effort. I am offering my resignation effective 60 days from this evening or earlier if a new board member is appointed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michael Bearden. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I'll just, I mean, we don't want to take up a whole lot of time and uh, Karen's already on the way out the door, but uh, I would I hope that I speak for all if, uh, Madam Administrator, if you could prepare a, um, a letter, a, a plaque and thanking for the service. That's a fairly significant service over a very difficult time. Um, and uh, I'd very much like to see us uh, present uh, Ms. Sindel with the appropriate uh, uh, recognition on our way out the door. Thank you. I, I just, I, I didn't know, she said she was offering it. I didn't know, I mean, is that a... Was that a uh, well? From what quit. from what I know about Karen, I'm okay. pretty sure that was a resignation. Know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> making sure. I, unfortunately, you know, I think she's done a lot of great work. But um, uh, sorry to hear that, uh, Michael. Hey, how's everybody doing? How you doing? Fun night, huh? Yeah. It's been a while since I've been here. My house was a lot of damage from Sally. Been working on that, and literally got the last thing the sprinkler system fixed this last week. And you know, don't cough too much. <laughs> You know, so overall, I'm doing good. I'm glad to be back here. I'm glad to get back into the action. And boy, is there action going on. First of all, I wanted to say, Ms. Allen Busey, uh, Ms. Gilly, Ms. Jernigan, thank you for what you all do. You're very important to this place. And the rest of you, all every one of you commissioners have something here going on. And it's very important, every one of you, what you do. We get up here and we yell at you guys all the time and we demand something that you can't give us. Every now and then we get lucky and you do give us. I remember a couple Christmases ago, I asked my, my dear wife asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I said, Rolex Submariner and a Bentley. But I said, this $50 watch works great, so I don't think I'll ever get one. Damned if I didn't get a Rolex Submariner. My point with that is sometimes we ask for stuff that we don't think there's a chance we're gonna get and damned if it doesn't come through. And mostly it comes through because you guys work hard. 
and I want to thank you. And other than that, the only other reason I'm here is to say what I say every single time I come to the, this dais. How's beach access number four doing? It hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. We're still working towards it. He's still working toward it, yes. Drove by it the other day, and you could almost see the asphalt. Yeah. You know? It's something that we need for people that can't afford a private beach like I have or like there he Doug is. has or other people have. So by all means, please keep that going for the people that can't afford it, that have a chance to enjoy the beach. Thank you very much, and, and I'm glad you're all here. Yeah. I mean, Tim, you can explain all the hoops that are having to be jumped through. Yes, sir. Thanks. Um, thank you, Commissioners. Tim Day, Senior Manager, Natural Resource Management Department. Um, with beach access number four, um, last week we've responded to what I hoped is the last request for additional information from uh, FDEP. Um, for their process, if they deem it complete, they will move forward with issuing a permit in the next 30 to 60 days. Um, in regards to U.S. Fish and Wildlife, um, we've received preliminary comments uh, from Christy Anches and we expect to provide uh, comments back to her uh, either tomorrow or Monday. Um, at this point, as well as we're looking at what the design looks like, uh, we will be coming back to the board. It looks like we're a little light on the budget, uh, but um, as soon as we get that updated, uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do to provide options uh, to the board. Um, so I would anticipate uh, more board discussion in the next 30 to 60 days. Pete, uh, uh, last speaker of the night, uh, Frank Cheney. My name is Al Cheney, and I'm a resident of North County. I'd like to address the board on the land issue y'all proposing up there. It's been told me I've been to several meetings. Uh, at 8.30 in the morning on Tuesday morning. Most people are working, can't attend them. For the North County to come down here to attend one of these meetings, an hour and a half drive, this time of day, they'd have to leave at three o'clock. I left my office right down from Mr. Berry's office at 4.15, got here at 5.20. I'm asking number one that y'all approve the meeting that the board, that the, uh, Plans are scheduled and approved, and somebody rejected it to come up north and let the people tell you what they think. They're totally against it. I'm against it. You want people to live on a little plot? They want to live in a rural area? Let them work. Save their money like we did. Buy 20 acres and put some cows on it or whatever, or 30 acres or whatever you want. But to move subdivisions in there? How are you going to pay for it? The infrastructure and the roads are junk. Has any of you rode them lately? I ride them every day. 97, going out more. Ride it every day. You'll be paving it before long or putting filling in potholes. Bad. Where are you going to get the money? You ain't got it. We got bridges that are condemned. You don't have the money to fix them. They've been there for years. They have to be not addressed. So what I'm asking is, if you could possibly work it out before you make any decisions, come to up in the county so those people can tell you what they think. It's not just me. I just happen to be, have the ability to get off when I so desire most of the time. So that's what I'm asking. A meeting up there so the people can address it. Y'all look at them. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Board will reconvene at uh, six o'clock. It's about six minutes. Six minutes.
Okay. All right. We have everybody okay. Good evening. This is the Board of County Commissioners regular scheduled uh, meeting for March 4th, uh, getting started a little after uh, 6.05. Uh, please turn your cell phone to the vibrate silence or offsetting. The Board of County Commissioners allows any person to speak regarding an item on the agenda. The speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairman to allow sufficient time for all speakers. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive outbursts, protests, or other conduct which interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting. Upon completion of the public comment period, discussion is limited to board members and questions raised by the board. For the invocation tonight, we have uh, Commissioner May has someone, and then we'll have uh, Commissioner Bagash do the pledge. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a former uh, em employee uh, of Escambia County, uh, Patrick Clinton Powell. Pastor Powell. Good evening. So that let me know y'all is alive because y'all spoke, right? Okay. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we real rejoice and be glad in it. We want to thank you for how you touched us with a fang of love and woke us up close in our right mind, having that mind to worship you spirit and truth. We want to thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. Because of your grace, we can see, we can hear, we can taste, we can walk. I pray in Christ Jesus' name, the risen Savior, the kind of commission from one through five, that you give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding to meet the need of the people. Give them compassion to meet the need, not the want. Let them know, Father, that you chose them to be in authority, but let them know you hold the whole world in your hand. If it had not been for Christ Jesus' blood, the whole world wouldn't be saved today. So we ask that you give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And the people's in this, in this place, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, they come a long way, they come far and near. I ask right now in Christ Jesus that you pray for their safe when they leave here. Protect them from seen and unseen danger. But most of all, Lord, let us love you with all our heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. These prayers we ask in Christ Jesus, the risen Savior. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. and amen. Please join me in the, uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have to say it is beautiful when we do that, and I got my back turned to the audience, and I can hear those tiny little voices out there that are that are speaking the loudest. You, you, uh, you to whomever that was, thank you for bringing those kids you, to us I was tonight. So you took the words right out of my mouth. It's amazing how they they stand out and, and all that. So it, you, I, I heard it too. Um, okay. Are there uh, any items to be added to the agenda? No, sir. Mr. Chairman, I, I do have one that has been uh, that has been distributed, and uh, I was just informed by Delana that it's uh, that it is in Civic Clerk now. But it is uh, uh, me fronting some discretionary money for uh, for a reallocation of some District Five Project LOST funds that uh, will be coming on March 25th. I'll, I guess I'll explain it when we get to it. But thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner uh, May. Uh, no, nothing, no. Okay. Commissioner Underhill? Nothing to be added. Commissioner Brioche. I've got one add-on. It was uh, distributed, and it's in Civic Clerk already. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything, Madam Administrator. Nothing. Okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I move that we accept the, the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. Second, please vote.
The motion passes 5 0. Uh, Commissioner's form. Commissioner Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to. Uh, uh, make anyone that's that's not aware aware, and, and certainly send our. Uh, I'm sure my, I'm sure everyone uh, will agree with me on it. But send our thoughts and prayers out to uh, State Representative Jerry Williamson. Um, he lost his mother a week ago Sunday, and uh, uh, since since Jerry has begun his public service, he's actually lost both parents. And um, as, as many of us that have uh, that have gone through that over over the years, uh, you know, can attest to it's it's it's. Extremely challenging time, and it's um, I'm sure even made more difficult, um, you know, when you're when you're gone lengthy periods of time, especially uh, you know when you're at an early session and committee meetings when uh, you know when you have an ill family member, and um, uh, she was a, a very sweet lady, and um, you know based on lengthy conversations with Jerry, she, uh, you know, she was very close to my mother's age and, and reminded me of my mom, the, the kind of mom she was. So it, it's. Uh, very sad day, but um, you know, thoughts and prayers are out to uh, Jair and Lindsay and his children, and um, um, it's a, a tough day for those folks. Definitely, thank you, Commissioner May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Commissioner Barry. Uh, uh, Representative Williamson Jared has, has been a good friend, and is when you and I were elected, his dad served as a county commissioner uh, in Santa Rosa County, and. We, Jared and I go way back to both being apprentice and, and, and laborers uh, when my dad was renovating the Imogene Theater and his dad was doing the electrical work. So we go we go back a long way. So our, our prayers are with him. And um, I, I told him we're very supportive. I told him I was very surprised that he introduced the bill to get rid of commissioners, but um, being that he, he served as one himself. But uh, Jared has been a dear friend. Uh, I do want to continue to solicit the prayers for Paulette, I mean, who quite frankly is one of those people uh, on the first African-American that was elected, Willie Jr., and she, <laughs> she worked here for the county, and I always looked up to her, and it's a very unfortunate situation as we were briefed this morning uh, about her condition, and I talked with her brother-in-law uh, on this afternoon, and so uh, our prayers are with their, their family, uh, but I also want to uh, give a, a, a shout out uh, to Community Health and Sandra Donaldson and, and to Sandra Smiley and their team and, and also our community health partners. I stopped by the community center on today and they were still doing vaccinations. And so I want to encourage people to continue uh, to recognize the seriousness of this uh, virus uh, of COVID-19. Uh, it is a pandemic, uh, although many would not recognize it or acknowledge it or even adhere to the guidelines and the protocols. I encourage people to do that. And so if you don't do it for your safety, do it for the safety of others. Uh, if you err, err on the side of safety. And it's unfortunate that the numbers are realistic numbers and over 600 deaths in Escambia County, but people think that it's a hoax. And the very people who think that it is a, it is a hoax are the very people that stand in line, the front of the line to get the vaccine. And so uh, we, we certainly uh, want to encourage citizens, although we don't have uh, any uh, mass mandates or social distancing mandate in the county. If I had my way, I, I'm for the record, I, I would have a mass mandate. Uh, I, I think it's uh, very sad that we probably lost six or seven employees of Escambia County uh, to COVID-19, uh, and we have yet to react to the deaths of people who have worked in this county for so long and to think that this is some type of hoax or joke when we have employees who have died and people will not wear masks, they will not social distance, and they not, will not adhere to the protocols. But you have that constitutional right, uh, but we have the constitutional right to encourage those uh, who we know that uh, believe uh, in, in, in equality, equity, and, and just common sense uh, to others uh, to adhere to those rules. And so finally, uh, I'll get off that soapbox, Mr. Chairman, and say uh, welcome to all of our teams uh, from the Southeast who are here for the Sun Belt Tournament uh, and to uh, all those who are working at the Base Center, the Pensacola Sports Association, uh, and welcoming our friends from Texas, Louisiana, uh, Georgia and all across the country uh, to Pensacola uh, to what I believe is going to be a great weekend of basketball here uh, and to thank my colleagues for those who have been very supportive in making sure that we had the resources uh, to host this tournament. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Underhill. No speeches to give. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Bergosh. Uh, just a couple of things. Since we had a week off last week, I want to I want to thank the um, Public Safety Department, Eric Gilmore specifically. Um, we had a very successful uh, vaccination event in District One. It was the first um, District One uh, event, and 350 doses uh, went out. And just really very appreciative of uh, of the staff that put that together, and also Pine Summit Baptist Church. In the Bellevue community it was very, very uh, well received. So hopefully uh, with the new vaccine coming online, there'll be more of those um, to come. So thank you for that. I also want to thank uh, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Tim Smith, for taking time to meet with me yesterday along with uh, school board member Kevin Adams. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on in Beulah. If you were here for the public forum, then you know. Um, but one of the things that, uh, that I know that we need out in Beulah is another school of some variety. Now, what it will be, uh, you know, that's uh, obviously up to the school board, school district, the superintendent, but um, I was more than willing to engage with them. And I, I told the superintendent um, that from this dais, uh, he can count on my support wherever he needs it. I just uh, have a passion for the schools uh, after serving 10 years on that board, knowing the challenges uh, that he faces, that, uh, that the school board face. Um, so that was a very, very good meeting. And we look forward to uh, hopefully doing something uh, to help them out in the Beulah community. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Brigosh. Uh, 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 as we've already mentioned the Sun Belt. Um, I want to thank everyone who, who played a part in getting that here. Wish all the teams best of luck, uh, and that they had uh, safe travels here, safe travels home, uh, and that, uh, that those who are victorious uh, uh, enjoy their, their, their run uh, in, into March. Um, and, and so I'm... Uh, so glad that that you know it's been over a little over a year since since this was announced. Uh, we didn't know how it was going to come come along, but uh, really the base center staff and everyone involved to um, put it, putting the best foot forward and, and putting Pensacola in the best light. So if if anyone's interested in going, I know there are still tickets available for this weekend, starting tomorrow evening uh, with the first games, and then the the championship game on on Monday evening uh, with the women's final uh, Monday after Monday afternoon at one o'clock. Uh, those games will be broadcast on, a, on an ESPN affiliated uh, network. Uh, we also uh, recognize the Pensacola Chamber uh, for the event last night with the PACE Awards. Uh, it's great to have uh, leaders uh, that are recognized in our community. I'm glad that we have them that, that step up. And uh, Mr. Brian Wire was here earlier who, who received the Advocate Award last night. Uh, so congratulations to everyone who was recognized and thank you for all you do. Um, and then my last comment of, of, of tonight was that um, unexpectedly this, eve this afternoon uh, on a call with FDOT, we were informed that the, the bridge would not reopen uh, on March 22nd. Um, to say that we're shocked would, would I mean, you know, we, we, we didn't believe that it was going to be March 22nd until we, we saw it, but we were very hopeful in, this, in the fact that it was a recent announcement uh, and they laid out a plan to make it work. Uh, unfortunately, they, they ran into a, uh, uh, an issue that, that, that hadn't been uh, found until they, they tried to replace or repair it, uh, which is gonna require the replacement of, of, the, of the whole entire structure uh, on, on Pier 70. Um, and so uh, they, uh, they have not given a timeline for when that would be replaced or repaired and that the two lane option would be reopened or opened. Um, but they, they did say that they hope to have all four lanes still open by Memorial Day. Um, your local government officials have, have been working all afternoon on trying to uh, do what we can to help the citizens uh, that are affected. Uh, for one, uh, we've Gulf Breeze, Samantha Abel and Mayor Fitch uh, along with Christine Fanchi from Escambia County, have been working on an MOT for the last few weeks that would help people getting off Pensacola Beach. Uh, and what this would do is this would uh, close one of the eastbound lanes of Highway 98 and allow cars not to have to stop at the stop sign as they're coming off the, the bridge. Uh, even last weekend with, with a little over 9,000 cars, we saw where that was starting to back up to the top of the hump. Um, and so these will, this will be uh, put out every Friday evening and then pulled up uh, Monday morning. Um, and if, if we're seeing we're having continue to have issues as we get more cars out there, 
Um, we'll definitely talk about expanding it, but for right now it's on the weekends where, where we do expect to see some type of issue. Uh, we've also started uh, talking again with the ferry operator who expects uh, to have uh, the first ferry back sometime in the week of March 22nd. Um, in anticipation of this, again, over the last few weeks, um, we've had staff that have been repairing the ferry landing and the quiet water pier. Uh, this is going to be a temporary repair until after the summer months to where we can go back and, and uh, build the full pier uh, the way we wanted to design it and we're getting ready to expand it uh, before Hurricane Sally hit. Um, and so we uh, really, hats off to engineering, I, I've pushed this hard this afternoon that we'll have that, that pier reopened by the time that the ferry comes back. So we hope to give this uh, option uh, to, to constituents and anyone that needs to get out to the beach, get out to Gulf Breeze um, or into Pensacola, um, an, an option as soon as that ferry returns. Uh, we'll continue to have discussions with FDOT on how they can assist us in making it um, uh, feasible uh, in terms of cost to the citizens um, and, uh, and actually having it be a viable option that, that people would want to use to, to, to use the ferry to get in. So um, ultimately, the safety of, of, the, of our people using the bridge is, is priority number one. And, um, and of course, we support um, FDOT's decision to, to go ahead and replace it as opposed to trying to make a temporary fix um, that would uh, require a, a more permanent fix later on. Um, so it's, uh, you know, there, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, everyone that's had to, to make that drive these last five months, um, I mean, although they didn't believe it, they saw the light at the end of the tunnel. And we were, I was really hopeful that we'd be able to deliver that, that FDOT would be able to deliver that, that Skanska and its contractors would be able to deliver that. And um, devastating news that, that it wasn't going to happen. Um, but uh, we'll continue to make the best that we can of it and, uh, and get it reopened as quickly and as safely as possible. Madam Administrator. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I am sorry for that news for our community. Um, this morning I asked for a point of personal privilege um, as it is Women's History Month. Um, I would just like to ask all of the female directors that work for Escambia County to stand. There is a room full. <laughs> Assistant. Assistant County Administrator, Communications, Budget, HR, ECAT, Facilities, Engineering. Um, you know, we have, a, and Tanya, I can't see Tanya back there, and Clara did leave, but um, when I was a county commissioner here, I remember two females were uh, directors. I remember Marilyn Wesley, and I remember, uh, I believe, Jean Kassab, and that was it. So just in 20 years, we've had an amazing turnaround from that perspective. Uh, I do look forward to the next 20, 30 years, whenever there may be more women standing in these roles in these positions. But I, but I would like to say that um, these ladies were all hired because they were the best in terms of the interview, not because they were just women. So I wanna make that very clear. Um, and I do enjoy working with uh, Attorney Rogers and with Pam Childers and her staff as well. So I, uh, we will have uh, some elder states women to uh, support whenever we have the next uh, the next commission meeting for Women's History Month. But in the meantime, I just wanted to recognize these ladies and the work that they do for the county every single day. And I would also like to mention that uh, we have about 640 women that work at the county. So we do have a large percentage of our county employees are also uh, women in the workplace and I appreciate them as well. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Administrator. Uh, I'll take a motion on the proclamation. Move that we adopt the proclamations as presented. Second. Okay, please vote. Okay. Motion passes 4 0, Commissioner May off the dais. Uh, Battalion Chief Brask, would you like to come to the podium, please? Would you like him to come up first? Or you want yes, please have him come okay. up. Yep.
So to, thank you for this opportunity to, to honor um, Lieutenant Barnett with the Scambia County Fire Rescue. <clears throat> Um, Lieutenant Barnett is a company here with obviously his family tonight, his um, life coach, who's his wife, Katie. Uh, she was actually a runner up in the 2019 uh, Scambia County Teacher of the Year. So he, he has a tough act to follow. So he, he, <laughs> she's there. <clears throat> he, he has the two children that were singing the Pledge of Allegiance, the 12 year old and the six year old there. Lieutenant Barnett started out volunteering in Escambia County in 2004 at Station 4 in Cantonment. He got hired on full-time in 2009. So um, go ahead and read the proclamation. Uh, Escambia County Proclamation, whereas Escambia County has established an employee of the month to recognize one employee to represent the various departments. And whereas Wesley Shane Barnett, a fire lieutenant in the Public Safety Department, is selected as employee of the month for March 2021, for the standards of excellence that he has displayed in the performance of his duties. And whereas Lieutenant Barnett began his employment with the county on September 20th, 2009, provides excellent service to the citizens of Escambia County through all assigned duties. And whereas Lieutenant Barnett can be relied on as an independent decision maker with issues inside the firehouse as though as those decisions concerning emergency incidents. Lieutenant Barnett works in a fire district that is isolated from, from other companies, which requires him at times to make decisions otherwise normally assigned to those of a higher rank. And whereas in the early morning hours of February 2nd, 2021, Lieutenant Barnett and his crew made a successful rescue of an adult male civilian under structure fire conditions. Lieutenant Barnett properly utilized his personnel <clears throat> to complete multiple fire ground tasks. Personnel under his direction properly pumped the apparatus, conducted forcible entry, extinguished the fire, and completed an aggressive interior search. Lieutenant Barnett and one of his firefighters made entry through the rear door, went down the hallway, and found the victim unconscious in his bed. The victim was removed from the mobile home, <clears throat> and Scambia County EMS provided patient care. And whereas, in the late afternoon of February 4th, 2021, Lieutenant Barnett and his crew were dispatched to a cardiac arrest incident. Lieutenant Barnett and the crew of Engine 1 found the patient lying in the middle of the street as a friend of the patient was conducting hands-only CPR. Lieutenant Barnett and his crew provided rapid basic life support interventions, which resulted in a return of circulation for the patient. And whereas Lieutenant Barnett fully embraces the importance of his profession, he continually works hard at training the personnel under his leadership to perform obviously at a high level, regardless of time or day or incident. Very few people have the capacity to become a quality, quality firefighters. Fortunately, the citizens of Escambia County should be thankful they have numerous quality firefighters like Lieutenant Barnett. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, that the Board of County Commissioners of Escambia County, Florida, commends and congratulates Lieutenant Wesley Shane Barnett on a selection of Employee of the Month for March 2021. Thank you. And then you'd like to have the family come up too, correct? Yes. So family? Yes, that means you. <clears throat> there you go. This is your time to shine, six-year-old. Do it. Come on. Do you want to hold this? There you go. Thank you. Don't forget to smile. All right, you got that? Okay. And Lieutenant, Lieutenant, you're, you're welcome to say a few words. Go ahead. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, uh, I definitely appreciate all the kind words, and I really want to thank all the people who showed up today. You can see quite a few in their uniform. Uh, it's definitely, and this guy, uh, <laughs> in their uniform supporting the fire department, and that's important. You know, we have to remember to support the fire department. Uh, this is just one small example. Uh, of the things that these men and women do every single day. So thank you all for coming. Thank my parents, my aunt, and obviously my wife and two kids. Thank you all. Thank you. Come on, buddy. Thank you, Battalion Chief.
Did the clerk's office receive the proofs? Mr. Chairman, the clerk's office has received all proofs. Move that we waive the reading of the no. second. All right, please vote. Motion away, the reading passes 5 0. We have a 531 public hearing. I believe we do have a speaker. Speaker on the second one. Okay. Move the 531. Second. Please vote. Five thirty one passes five zero. Uh, five thirty two, uh, we have one speaker, uh, Jacqueline Rogers. Good evening again, Jacqueline Rogers. Just really briefly, I just want to say let's do things the right way when it comes to land use and planning. Let's get the staff educated on what the stat statu sta state statutes are. When I question them under oath, do you, you know, know about this state statute and career development services people didn't know those state statutes and I do as a layperson, I think that's an issue. And that's not to criticize the, if this is the way it used to be done, but it's against state statutes and that, that's a training issue in my opinion. Um, I've, I talk to people around the state that do planning legally and also as, as planners and um, sometimes what we do is not the professional way to do it, and, and, and I think we can do that. I don't want to stand up here and fight all the time, and yes, we'll have disagreements with um, some decisions, and that's fine. Uh, I understand that you guys can hire legal people or planners to get the decision you want, but I'm just imploring you as commissioners, just like this was found to be not in compliance, what is the right thing for the community? Could, could we just put aside interests and say, long term, what's this, what is the cost to the community? So that's all I wanted to say on this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers on the item? No, sir. Move the 532 in the affirmative. Second. Okay. Please vote. All right, so Commissioner May has voiced a yes vote. And we've got a lot of votes here. It passed seven to zero, guys. Whoa. So, uh, That's the consensus that building right there. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, but anyway, it, 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 let's just do a show, quick show of hands. As everyone said yes, but everyone showed votes once. So five zero to repeal the, the ordinance 2019-09. Seven zero. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the clerk and comptroller report. Thank you. I have four items on the consent agenda tonight for your approval. Again, letting you know that the comprehensive annual financial report was completed with a clean opinion. The second item to bring your attention was the tourist development tax revenues for this next upcoming is exceeding prior uh, January, February months. That number is 515,867 for those of you that track that. We'll send okay. a report out shortly. Uh, uh, we do have a speaker for two sure. items. Uh, item one, uh, Melissa Pino. Thank you, Chairman. Better Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Boblets. If um, you gentlemen were planning on taking these in two, maybe this would be the very rare occasion that we could combine the minutes on it. I just didn't know if you guys wanted to take both motions. I'll get, I'll get right back up the next, on the next one. Okay. Um, I wanted to address the nexus of discussion that has taken place, not just in the morning agenda review today, but online on social media, um, and this isn't anything about the results uh, of the of the audit per se. That there's you know been anything improper happening, um, but I would like to say respectfully that you gentlemen don't know where your money is, and you haven't since these executive orders on um, both the excuse me the emergency orders on both the hurricane and COVID have gone, gone in. And I have said this, and, and I have said this, 
I started it out in an email on EMS, which I will address in the next meeting, asking where the money went for the first quarter of this fiscal year. But on this one, um, you know, uh, Commissioner Underhill dropped the just blanket disinformation um, that blew everything up. And then, of course, this particular item got wrapped up in that online about the fact um, of the brownouts, which are horrible. And I support raises for our emergency personnel, but to use it in the way that he does and then to wrap it into the budget like this. What I want to underline is the following. Um, how does $23 million that was supposed to go to our public safety just get schlepped over to CARES? And then nobody asks any questions about it. How does that happen? How do we have $23 million in public safety just get moved? And I, I, I guess I'm asking for clarification that I don't have, you, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. I wish you would. Is it because we can move now between these different kinds of money without bringing it to the board um, because of the emergency orders? Is it happening in these massive CARES things that have no backup? that the public can see that you just get dispersed it. And now I finally learned, Ms. Childers, where this, these things exist in the Muni Code later. And I want to say that your staff member did offer me that, and I completely forgot about it. So I'm sorry that happened you know, some time ago. This, it, it's just unacceptable that this money, this is not the only monies that are being moved around, but how can we lose $23 million during a pandemic out of our fire and EMS, and it just gets transferred to a nebulous CARES. Oh, it's on page 20 of the report as if that just excuses it. I think you need to press for some more answers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd love to address that because uh, my understanding was that every penny we got, we actually spent more than that. So, um, so the so what we've done is we have we have used those funds to draw down the cares. So they've not gone anywhere in terms of expenditure. They have been expended on public safety. But we've used them in the to map, to draw down the cares funding the fifty seven million dollars. So the financial account. I mean we can explain the CAFR if we need to explain the CAFR, but probably Ms. Pino should probably meet with staff to learn about the CAFR. That'd probably be the better option. I don't think so. I, I figured you wouldn't. Thank you. So, I mean, bottom line is, though, is that we didn't spend 23 million less dollars. No, absolutely we did not. Then we had budgeted. <laughs> absolutely we did not. We brought every penny to this board to be spent, expended. But every I, but, penny. But I'm, I'm just saying, not even that it wasn't brought to the board, but that public safety spent uh, we've spent more money than we have brought in. Yes, we have. Okay. All right. In terms of the MSBU for public safety and, and those types of things. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and take item two then. TDT. Okay. Thank you, Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Bible. It's one of the line items on the financial report that came had expenditures for public safety at a zero line item. I'm not sure whether I just heard correctly that this was used as a match on the CARES. I, I apologize if I didn't understand the CAFR and the fact that we needed matches for CARES, but now I will refer back to an email that I sent in to you gentlemen. Melissa, if you can stay on the topic that you've signed this up to This is very on. much on the topic. This is, this is, this Doesn't is. Doesn't sound like TDT. it. This is TDT. Oh, this is TDT. I thought this is one and two of the finance. You had two items. One was for, it was for two different versions of the financial report. No. Item two that you signed up for is recommendation concerning acceptance of TDT collection data for December 2020, returns received in January 2021. The first item that you've already spoken on is concerning acceptance of comprehensive this annual is, financial reports. I apologize. This is strange because on my written agenda, it has under the clerk and comptroller's report that CR uh, consent agenda 1-1 is on the financial officers association version and that two was on the auditor general version. It's basically the same report, but there will be some internal control reports that are added to that. But what you're talking about is the same item. But it's listed on the agenda as two separate items. It's not. 
It's the same item. It will have some internal control reports to the back side of it for the Auditor General, but it's the exact same report. The state makes us report it two different ways. Same report. I will be you know what? M my apologies. It's under one, and I saw the one and two. Right. Because sometimes things that are You're supposed right. to be out left justified as standalone we, items are appearing we indented in the agenda. We just converted to a new system okay. and we're working with the programmer because the indents are throwing us all off. Thank you for acknowledging and the indents. you would think that would be a really easy <laughs> fix, but it hasn't been, okay. but we're still working on that. Okay. I understand your confusion. Yep. I'd be glad to work with you on the CAFR as fine. well. That's fine. Thank you. I apologize. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. So, board, we have the consent agenda for the clerk's report. Move the clerk's report in its entirety. Second by Commissioner May. Any further discussion, please vote. And only had five votes for that. So uh, motion passes 5-0 for the clerk's consent. Horse? Yes, so for tonight we have the um, rezoning case Z-2021-01. Uh, the planning board had, a, had made a, a recommendation for approval. Okay, we do have two speakers board. We have uh, Ken Mackey. Damn favor. So. Uh, I'm Ken Mackey, the owner of the present mobile home park. And the only thing I'll say is that the buyer, Mike Dulaca, will maintain the property as an improved mobile home park. He wants to put 29 total spaces, and it'll be excellent quality for uh, senior citizens, basically. Very good housing. That's all I want to confirm. That's what the property will be used for. Great. And I appreciate your positive vote. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, Mike is our next speaker, if you'd like to say anything or wave in support. I'll make it very quick, sir. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Mike DeLuca. Uh, I plan on retiring down to Escambia County. Um, I plan on improving the park, as Mr. Mackey said. It currently has 16 units in it. I plan expanding it to the uh, original 29 that was approved by the health department. I plan on putting uh, a total of 16 new homes in that uh, development. They're all going to be, you know, brand new or very close to brand new. So uh, just hope for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, how many did you say you're putting on there? Sir, it's going to be a total of, right now there's 16. I'm sorry? Right, right now there's a total of 16. Uh, Mr. Mackey's got a mobile home or a uh, RV on one of the spaces. And then two of the units are going to be demolished and removed from the property. So it's going to be a total of 16 new homes, right. but it'll be an expansion of 13 total lots for a total, for a total of, of 29. Out. Okay. Um, so it looks like the, um, I just want to make sure that it says here that the, it's going from a medium density, 10 <coughs> per acre, to a low density of 7 per acre. Um, and it's uh, 3.89, which would, would be just over, um, I want to make sure I, uh, you know, just shy, of t uh, just over 27. So if we're going to 29, that, that seems like it's um, going over. Is that my math right on that? So we were hoping to do the 29. So I'm, I don't know. So confirm that we are going from a from a medium density, which would allow it to a low density. So we're going from 10 per acre to seven per acre, and at seven per acre, the plans don't match. So we may have to stick with 27, if that's the case. <laughs> I believe, from what I understood, is the only way we could do an expansion was to change it to this type of usage. Excuse me, let me say yeah. something. And when it comes to the site plan review process, we will make sure that he's meeting the land development code. It's just a rezoning. If he cannot meet based upon that, we'll, if we got to subtract two units at the site plan review process, we'll make sure that happens. Uh, 
I can only do what I can do, I guess. You, you are correct. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm just making sure it's, we, yes, sir. we realize that on the front end. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd uh, move uh, zoning case Z2021-01 in the affirmative uh, with the proactive stipulation that uh, this is a rezoning to LDMU and uh, if any further uh, activity on that lot will be required to uh, meet the criteria of LDMU. Yes. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes 5 0. 545. The next item is the adoption of the amending the rezoning map. The zoning map. Okay. I'll move the item in the affirmative. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes 5 0. Uh, 546. 546 is to review and adopt. Chapter 4, uh, minimum for the Santa Rosa Island floodplain ordinance to review and approve. Okay, we don't have any speakers. Move the item in the affirmative. Second. Okay, please vote. <laughs> Motion passes 5-0. 547, we have two speakers. Yes, and this is the replacement item as it was presented this morning for the first of two public hearings for the replacement recommendation. Okay. First so of two. The replacement recommendation is based off the, um, the planning board. The planning, planning boards board. uh, yes. and uh, our legal reviewed and, and agreed with those. Uh, yes. So, uh, Jacqueline Rogers. Okay, um, Jacqueline Rogers, I, I am asking you actually to send this back to um, the planning board. The data that is in there is data. I mean, you can throw facts in there, but there was no analysis on what the effect that this would be to agricultural operations up there or silver culture. There, is, there was no quantification of how many acres this could um, lead to. If you look at the um, wording that's proposed, it says along the highway, but it doesn't say how much of your property has to be along the highway, 10%? You know, could you have an acre and then could you have 500 acres that are attached to it and that can all be developed? So there is no, no analysis on the infrastructure, no, no um, analysis on what, what the roads are up there and if they can handle this. This is the definition of sprawl from your own comprehensive plan commissioners, which is based off the state statutes. Haphazard growth of dispersed leapfrog and strip development in suburbs and rural areas and along highways. Typically sprawl is automobile dependent, single use, resource consuming, and low density development in previously rural areas and disconnected from existing development and infrastructure. And this is exactly what this proposal is. The consultant did agree to take out the medium density wording in there, which is your, op your other option, and, and that was very concerning. But you, my, I had proposed you can expand housing up there if you just took the existing rural community that already allows one dwelling unit uh, uh, per four acres, if you would just take those rural community areas and take all the contiguous agricultural areas and expand as you go up. But now, right now, what this approves is random approval along those highways. And you know, if you've driven up those highways, those are not expressways, those are roads, and a lot of them need a lot of help. I, I ask you to send this back and um, find something that has less sprawl inducers in here, and also that there be data and analysis. There was the beginning of this, whereas says this is to meet population, um, and that there's no other way to do this, but, but there was no quantification of how many homes are coming in in the sector plan, how many homes are coming in in, the, in Beulah and Cantonment in the southern part of the county. There was none of that data. I guess it wasn't under the scope of work from the attorney's office. But this is stuff that I feel will be challengeable. It's not a good um, ordinance, and, and there's a lot of people that have a lot of concerns. If you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Al Cheney.
Another thing I'd like to point out, my name is Al Chaney, and another thing I'd like to point out is the effect it's going to have on farming. I don't know how many of it farmed or know anything about it. Seven years ago, I managed to buy the land and started building a herd of non-GMO cattle. Gentlemen, I got 50 head of cows to check on when I get home tonight. 33 head of sheep, six horses, five dogs, and it's work. There's no eight to five to know you start at daylight or before and you quit. And for me to work that hard along with a lot of others doing the same thing up there, there's a lot of people buying 20 acres and they're buying stock and put on it and they're trying to make something of it. Put in that kind of work and then you want to put subdivisions all around it. And that's what this says, that you can pick and choose where a subdivision will go. That's not a very economical way to build an area. I happen to know something about sewers and water. It's high dollar. If you're going to pick up at a dead point that's already been developed and let the developer pick up the cost to go to his subdivision, charge it, split it amongst the houses, that's fine. But you can't sprawl it all over the county. Because this says that you're doing that. It's contradicted. We don't need a bunch of people around our farm. And that's why we worked hard to get there. Now, so I'm really asking y'all to come up, and you're going to hear some upset people. But if those people can't get to y'all, then y'all say, well, why didn't you show up? Because you don't make it available to them. I just happen to be one of the few that can do this. They are true farmers. I run a business and farm. And I'm trying to build a farm. I'd like to retire there. And I'm going to be honest with you. If this is what's going to happen, I'm moving to Alabama. You can't live here. 35 to 40 percent of your labor force in Escambia County crosses the Alabama line or the Santa Rosa County line. They come here to work and they go home. Why? Your taxes are out of control. You can't afford it. I just sold 19 acres I was going to build a house on. I checked with Chris Jones and when he told us it's going to cost me $3,500 a year, and me trying to retire. Ain't gonna happen if I sold the land. So that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get y'all to hear the people because they're not happy. They are true farmers. They work from daylight to dark. So I'm asking y'all to do that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Al. Uh, board, that was the last speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Depending on whether my colleagues have questions, I would certainly move the 547, including option B. Second. Discussion? Yes, sir. Um, the real takeaway that we should have from the uh, case in which the state had to remind us how to do uh, this properly, um, the real takeaway should be that we're not doing the analytics that are required uh, to feed these decisions. Um, and, to, and I've seen far too many times, especially in, in rezonings in which the, um, the, the, the burden of proof, the onus is on the developer to present uh, the, the impact. Um, you know, thinking through the discussion that we've had this morning about the impact fees and things like that, we, we don't have an idea that I'm aware of uh, of what enough, when enough is enough uh, in Escambia County. And um, I'm, I remember my predecessor used to say, it's not about the 300,000 people who are here today, but the 500,000 who will be here tomorrow. Um, and I just couldn't disagree more. It is about the quality of life and quality of place here of the people who are here today. Um, and so for myself, I won't be able to support anything br coming from planning and zoning from, uh, from Horace's office where you haven't done the analysis. Um, now, obviously, you know, four one votes the same as a five zero vote, um, but you have to do the analysis and it's really not, it, it's not that, on that, that onerous, right? It's, it's actually not that difficult to do. So. Uh, Horace, I really need to see you take on board what happened here and why we're having to come back and take a round turn on this by doing the hard analysis and really making the case and forcing the developers who are asking for things that are outside of our regulations to do their part as well. So um, mine will be a, a vote no uh, and we'll probably be seeing quite a bit of that uh, as we move in until we start seeing the kind of analytics that uh, professional planning really requires. Mr. Berry? 
Thank you. Uh, don't see any more lights on. Uh, Commissioner Underhill, in this case, I, I want to thank uh, uh, County Attorney Allison Rogers. Um, we have a professional planner that was engaged that did a tremendous amount of work. Well, I'm not, well, perhaps. Um, that includes the data and analysis that you're talking about. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mrs. Rogers, but uh, candidly, every um, every point that she made at the planning board was um, was debunked by the planner with data and analysis after the uh, after the testimony was given. So I certainly appreciate your comments. And as you say, 401 is the same as 50. Uh, and if there's not any more questions, then uh, then I guess we can move forward. Okay. Please vote. Five forty seven option B passes four one with Commissioner Underhill in dissent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The next item is the GMR action for Emma's Ridge. We ask for this item to be uh, pulled. And we do have a speaker. Uh, Andrew Bluer. I didn't hear what he said. The item is being pulled by the, at the request of the applicant. By the applicant? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I asked it to be pulled this morning, and he refused to. But that I like. But I still have comments. This here is ridiculous. I don't know how to say that. This morning, I, well, this afternoon, I talked to Tim Day. We have no LOST money. We've been... Drowning in LOST money. One, two, three, now we're in the four. We've been drowning in it, but we have none. Y'all rather what you do? We want to buy new fire trucks instead of using O&M money Sorry, to change the oil. Mr. Bluer, how does this relate to the... Well, I'm going to give you a little plant. history lesson. Okay, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking. I'm giving you a history lesson. Stay, I'm, I'm going back 26 years. I wanted some LOST-1 money to fix a stormwater problem on Muldoon Road. Chris Kerb showed me a plan that would work ideally for what I wanted, but it didn't happen because of Cindy Anderson. Thank you, Commissioner Gilly. You make a better commissioner than you do as a county administrator. Mr. And I Mr. appreciate- Mr. Blur, Mr. Blur, I need you to stay on, on topic. Please. I am on topic. I'm giving you I, a well, history then, then, lesson. Then please get to the, okay. Please get to, I mean, I, this is- Y'all say you don't have any LOST money or whatever, but you've been drowning in it. I, I, so don't interrupt me on my time. No, sir, I'm just let trying to ask speak, you to talk about- Let me about say my three minutes and then you can make comments and try to shoot me down. No, sir, the, the, the item is, you have to speak on the item. I am. I'm saying- I haven't heard anything about the item yet. Horns. And whoever's in charge of development and stuff like that, that is not a hundred year pond you got there. And y'all were going to vote on accepting this hundred year pond that doesn't park, perk or whatever. And this is where y'all been throwing away LOST money at. It, Florida number two, ditch, Rosewood holding pond that didn't perk. Zachary Estates holding pond didn't perk. Buckland holding pond still doesn't perk. Barefoot Estates holding pond had to be fixed with what? LOST money. Midas Muldoon, y'all have tried what? Three times now on Midas Muldoon to fix the problem with LOST money, I guess. Tanglewood, y'all assume responsibility of Tanglewood when I told you that that was a problem with Tanglewood Estate. And y'all had to spend money now to repair Tanglewood. Godwin Lane Ponds. There's two pieces of property that y'all purchased or donated to you as perks from who? Adam's Home? Or the, the new expanded communities of Florida LLC? I mean, you can have a thousand LLCs. Where does all these here campaign contributions come from? Is it Adams Home? All these LLCs? 
Does Horrence have anything to do with these LLCs getting um, their project passed? Mr. Chairman. I was, I was giving him a little extra time because I did interrupt, but... Um, I mean, I, I haven't finished. Cornerstone well, yes, Pond, sir, you're, you're, Cedar Ridge. You're, sir, your time's up. Thank you. Are there any other uh, speakers? No, sir. Move the item in the affirmative. So this is to drop the item. Drop, yes. uh, move that we drop the item. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Okay. Please vote. Motion to drop passes 5-0. Consent agenda? Yes, sir, the consent agenda. Scheduling the public hearings for April 8th? Yes, sir. Move the consent agenda as presented. Second. Please vote. Motion passes 5-0. County Administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, there are seven items on the agenda. Technical public service consent agenda. There are no changes, um, but we do have a speaker on car 1-7. Okay. Move the ballot. No, second. Okay. Please vote. Hamster's running a little slow tonight. <laughs> Maybe somebody's going to get two votes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Motion passes 5 0 for the uh, balance. Uh, item 7, mm -hmm. uh, recommendation concerning District 1 committee appointments. Speaker is Andrew Bluer. This item, I just didn't want it to be rubber stamped. And I was hoping that we could have a little bit of discussion about it. Um, I'm not sure what this appointment is concerning. So this is an appointment for Michael Bearden on your right shoulder for appointment to the Marine, I mean, to the uh, MTAC, MTAC. Mm -hmm. and then Melissa Pino on your left shoulder to the Marine Advisory Council. Okay. The only question I've got is about the Marine Advisory Council is it must not be a wet slip boat captain or a Galvez Landing wannabe boat captain that uses Galvez as their um, wet slip. Ms. Pino, does either apply to you? Does either apply to you? Uh, certainly not. Okay. She's acceptable. Okay, thank you. What about me? Are you a wet slip? Oh, no, I got my own private beach. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not a charge yet. Yeah. All right, board. Uh, I move the item in the affirmative. Second. Okay, please vote. Uh, Commissioner May. Motion passes 5 0. Tell me I got a job again. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Administrator, we have a number of speakers. If you want to. Um, it looks like, all right, so there are 27 items on the bu budget fi finance consent agenda. And um, we are going to drop card 2 17, which is the supplemental budget amendment number 68. And we do have a speaker on that. Um, if you, it, it appears you could do 1 through 10, because 11 is the first one where we start having speakers. Uh, so move, have, move items 1 through 10. Second. Okay, please vote on items 1 through 10. Two dash eleven, we do have a speaker. I believe we were going to drop that and ask for a sixty-day uh, renewal. We do have two speakers, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Barry. That's the debris hauling. 
Yes, I, uh, Mr. Chairman said we had a couple speakers, but yeah, I mean that that would be mm -hmm. that would be my intent. I mean, six, sixty days is sixty days is okay. Nothing's going to mm -hmm. happen in sixty days. But I hope that you know, relatively soon, we see some good faith, good faith effort as far as what um, what's being proposed, the method to uh, to incorporate what the board uh, gave the majority of the board gave feedback about this morning. Perfect. Uh, we will listen to the, uh, so Madam Administrator, is your intent just to uh, uh, go through and onesie it or do you want to? Uh... Well, I mean, there are speakers for 11, 13, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, right. and 24. Okay. Yeah, you want okay. to move the balance then? Mm -hmm. All right, and, and so we are dropping uh, 17 and 11, but we do have speakers on both, so those will be held anyway. All right. Madam, Madam Administrator, can you repeat the ones that are being held for speakers? If, if you want me to. Yeah, you can do okay. it if you'd like. So uh, 11, 13, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24 are all being held for speakers. And, and hold 15, too, because I have a question. And, and request hold 15. Motion to approve the balance stands. All right. Second. Yep. If there's anything left. Okay. Please vote. Motion for the balance passes five to zero. Uh, item 11, Andrew Bluer. Commissioner Ray, I appreciate what you did there. Um, I'm all for it. There's a lot of minority contractors that I think should really get a chance. As a matter of fact, we have a problem right now that, that um, ditch on the end of Godwin Lane that Joy Jones has proposed spending millions of dollars and I don't know where she's planning on getting that FEMA money or LOST or whatever that is or whatever but I think what we just need to do Luma May is have a good old guy go down there and clean out a ditch if you know what I mean I've cleaned out a many a ditch by myself, and it don't take a genius to clean out a ditch. So, I mean, let them go out for bids on cleaning out the ditch, cleaning those trees out of the ditch, and I mean, if you need to put some riffraff or something other on the ditch bank, but I think the water won't even get up to the side of the ditch. It won't go out of the ditch bank if the ditch is clean, right, Lumen May? So, can I get a vote of confidence from the county commissioners that let's do that, clean out the ditch instead of spending LOST money, and then we can do my boat ramp at Lillian with LOST money that was promised with LOST 1, LOST 2, phase 3 of Bellevue stormwater drainage or whatever. It should have been done with LOST money, but it didn't. Y'all spend LOST money uh, $6,000 plus to collect water to dump on me. And that's why I'm upset. For 26 years. Yes, sir. 26 years. I want y'all not listen to me. You're up there. You're not listening. You're thinking, how can I get him off this podium? No, sir. I'm, I'm, I was going to ask how it re re relates to debris hauling because that's the topic. Huh? It, talking about debris we're, we're talking about debris exactly hauling. that's what i'm saying debris hauling i want the debris taken out of the ditch well, that's not the debris that would be hauling out of this this is the that the debris that we remove after a hurricane from the right of that way. hurricane sally yes sir remove the debris out of the ditch after hurricane sally same thing um with storm drains or whatever the debris that's backed up at storm drains or whatever right there on muldoon Nobody's going around and looked at those storm drains to see if there's debris blocking those storm drains. And I mean, and Janet Gilly, she's firing everybody that's got any common sense in public works. And she making about Cindy Anderson, Joy Blackman, and now Joy Joins or whatever. Well, with a title comes a lot of responsibility. Who blew up the jailhouse? 
Mr. Joy Chairman. Blackman said, if I only knew that the holding ponds needed to be maintained Thank or you, whatever, I would have done that. Move that we drop the item. We still have one more speaker. We have two more. Okay, Melissa Pino. Thank you, Chairman Bender. Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Boblets. I was absolutely astonished to hear Commissioner Underhill talk about how wonderful the debris removal went in, in District 2. I think Kevin's going to speak um, more to that, how we single-handedly removed most of the debris, not just on our block, but had to get written permission to move the debris across the street in the park while the subcontractors gamed it all over town, and everyone saw them doing it. Um, I, this is a, this is, I, I, I'm astonished that the most basic best practices for government procurement are annihilated over and over. We have seen every way that procurements can be gotten around for best practices over and over. Uh, Beach Haven, look what happened. And oh, they're over on ECW saying, oh, Mel brought something for nothing. No, actually, you all know how that ended up is that after the three ring circus of dragging 18 staff members to the podium who didn't know anything about it, I got a two sentence email from Miss Gilly the next day, throwing the commission under the bus and letting me know that in fact, it wasn't gonna be brought at a future meeting because you all had already passed it the previous two, two meetings ago and Commissioner Underhill pretended he didn't know anything about it, he seconded the motion on it. So I don't know if it's if he doesn't read the items in his own district, or, or maybe he forgot, I don't know. But um, Commissioner May, this morning you said that once you hire the big ones, then underneath them, that's a management problem. But the procurement problem is far worse because if we're not doing proper procurement, how are you gonna get the proper management? And everyone, I think in town, who pays attention to politics, has been hearing about this wood chip removal problem. Everyone, everyone. So what happened with that procurement? Once, once that vegetative debris was turned into wood chips, what everyone is saying is that there were small contractors that were told they, they, they could not bid on that because they had no county license, they only had a state license. And I think there's a possibility that the big contractor who got it was allowed to get that license retroactively. If I'm wrong, I would love to be disabused of this notion that that bad of an occurrence didn't happen. But the, this is out in the community being talked about, gentlemen. So if these things aren't true, then at least they need to be addressed because that's a very common understanding. And that, that's only one issue that I've heard about with procurement. Um, why a huge vendor that came in so much lower than all of the other small vendors were allowed to handle all of that wood chip removal. If there was nothing wrong with procurement, it's still not good management. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Wade. Kevin Wade, 413 Southeast Bobolitz. I, I am not a wet slip boat captain, but I know many. Um, Opal, Aaron, Danny, George, Ivan, um, and then Sally. Now, uh, all of these have brought their own amounts of debris <laughs> uh, that, that had to be removed in one way or another. This is, de debris renew removal is nothing new. What I saw was more new light gamings of the system from the, the, the people hired to follow contractors around in a car as they hop, skipped, and jumped. Uh, near randomly, I, I, I cannot understand how these people were doing this and the way that they kept doing it and the fact that we were paying observers who weren't, weren't doing simple things like saying, hey, you used your skid loader, you push a bunch of debris on both of the sidewalks on a bridge. 
that people have to walk on to get to where they're going. Um, I saw contractors severely off map. And so far as just this morning, walk and dog, there were orange jumpsuits out cleaning debris in Navy Point that has been there since Sally. There's still trees all akimbo in, in the park, or at least the stumps. Oh, I can't understand how bad these people were at doing the job, but they seem pretty good at collecting the money over and above what they had agreed to be doing the job for. Is that, am I wrong there? Um, and watching the, 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 the tree cutters, you know, they, they seem to have an eye for safety to a point, but they were pulling things out of the water. And if they were getting paid for tonnage and cutting way off map and cutting trees that had no business being cut down, um, our observers weren't trained to even be a wet slip boat captain. Thank you, Mr. Wade. Take a motion to drop the item. So moved. Second. Thank you. Please vote. Motion to drop passes 5-0. Uh, item 13, concerning the assignment of agreement for PD 1920 for temporary medical staffing services for Scammy County Corrections. Melissa Pino. I'm gonna wait for that. Okay, no need. Move the item in the affirmative. Thank you. Second. Please vote. Uh, motion passes 5-0 to uh, approve the item. Item 17 is being dropped, but we have a speaker, Andrew Bluer. Oh, uh, sorry, we also held 15, so hold on, please, Mr. Bluer. Uh, item 15, Commissioner May. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief Powell, or Administrator Gilly, uh, just for informational purposes, I'm, I'm very supportive of this. How has it worked? And I, mean, I guess a couple questions. Are, are we being successful in recruiting and retention? And, how has that been since the implementation? And uh, if a person does complete the course and decides to go work in Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, uh, is there a repayment? Those are my three questions. Yes, sir, there is. Uh, we, we, when we hire somebody that is not certified, uh, they sign an agreement to reimburse us for the cost of the academy. Uh, I think it's a two-year commitment at that point. Uh, if they leave before two years, then, and as, you, as you've seen, come before the board. We give them opportunity to, to make the payment. If they don't make the payments, uh, and then we'll bring the action to the board. And uh, are, are the classes full? Uh, we have 17 people shooting for this next academy at 25. It's uh, a lot of us are fishing from the same pond, as a friend of mine called it, uh, for the qualified applicants, uh, fire, the SO, us, and many other agencies in the community that uh, for uh, young individuals or just individuals, period, that have a uh, ability to make the, the background checks and and pass the requirements. So we found it challenging to recruit? Oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. It's a small community and there's many needs. So, we, but we are partnering with the high schools and the academies at oh, the high have, school. We have recruit. an aggressive recruiting campaign, uh, campaign going now. Um, and uh, with uh, a little bit of continued effort, uh, I think we will we'll get where we need to be in short order. And, and you know, so for me, and, and thank you, Chief, for what you're doing. I, I just want to be open and, and very supportive of any incentives that we want to give young people. Uh, that, I mean, the college enrollment is decreasing, not increasing. And I think an, an opportunity to serve in government, and it's, it's not the highest paying job in the world, but it is an opportunity for a, a income and an opportunity for advancement. So uh, yes, sir. there's something more that we can do. I would hope that you bring that forward. Yeah, the county benefit package that we bring forward uh, when we start talking to, to, to young adults, 
Uh, we, we are strong advocates for the tuition and reimbursement that we offer among, among the other benefit packages as well. So, yes, we are. Thanks, Chief. I'll move the item, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, sure. Second. Second. Commissioner Andrew, do you have anything to say on that? Or, okay. Uh, no further discussion. Please vote. Motion passes 5 0. Uh, item 17 is a supplemental budget amendment. <clears throat> it's a uh, recommendation is that it's dropped, but we do have a speaker, Mr. Bluer. Like I say, this goes back 26 years, mismanagement of LOST funds, whatever. And like I say, we've had a lot of county administrators um, that messed up. We've had county commissioners messed up. I mean, I asked W.D. Childers and Will D Willie Jr. or whatever about a boat ramping in North Perdido Bay or whatever, but um, I don't know what happened to W.D. Childers or whatever, but Willie Jr. crawled underneath the front porch and drank antifreeze and committed suicide. And then all of a sudden, Janet Gilly gets appointed as county commissioner. She did a better job doing that than what she's doing right now. Because I don't see no LOST3 money going to phase three that was, what was that? That was September 27th, 2020. Phase three. I haven't seen phase three. Is, can J Joy Jones show me where phase three of the Bellevue Storm Water Project is at? It's been over 20 years. Over 20 years, I'm waiting for phase three with LOST money. Um, also, I mean, Jeff Agosh's campaign pros, promise is saying, well, we're going to build that boat ramp on the North Perdido Bay. We are. We are. We are. But we don't, Tim says we, Tim says we ain't got no money, no LOST money. We're drowning in it. Every year, y'all get more and more LOST money. But y'all rather buy fire trucks and dump trucks than use O&M money to change the oil. Y'all, when y'all voted, when we voted for LOST money, it was supposed to be fun stuff, not this here beach renourishment, because that sand just keeps going away, going away, going away. So I think um, Commissioner Bender and Commissioner Underhill or whatever, much like these here dredge barges out there, can campaign contributions or something. I don't know. It's not visible for me. But I'm sure that somebody can do some investigation and find that out. But I've got Pam working on that for me. She's going to tell me where every last one of those dolls is going to go from, come from. And where, and same thing with the campaign contributions. Those LLCs, I mean, uh, one man can have 50 LLCs. Can each one of those make a campaign contribution? Thank you. I take a motion to drop the item. I, I, I move to drop the item, but Mr. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I mean, I, Andrew, you, you have a lot of good points, but Willie Jr. was a dear friend of mine, and unfortunately, I've never met anybody that's seen him crawl underneath the house. I agree with uh, you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, I don't think we spend any LOST money on uh, on dredging the for the beach either. No. Uh, not. I mean, that's uh, Island Authority is paying 1.3 million dollars a year to us to, on, on that loan that we took. So. All right. And if you know someone that's seen them crawling into the house, please tell me because they should be prosecuted. Sure. Commissioner Underhill, do you do you dredge on on the island? Is that? What's three? Three okay. LOST three. Okay. Beach All right. So. Uh, anyway. Uh, a motion to I'm gonna comment whenever I get ready. Add a motion and a second to drop the item. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I didn't catch the second on that. I, I made the motion. I'll second it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> motion to drop passes five zero. Recommendation con uh, 18, recommendation concerning the construction of a maintenance facility for emergency vehicles. Uh, Andrew Bluer. Uh, 
I like the idea of a maintenance facility for the vehicles or whatever. That means that we will change the oil instead of, and use some O&M money or whatever, but then we're gonna drown in LOST money because we, the, the equipment will work longer and last longer or whatever, so I guess that'd be good. But you still are gonna buy new fire trucks, new dump trucks, new rollers at Perdido Landfill. You're still gonna buy a fleet of vans for ECAT instead of just servicing all these vehicles. Thank you, sir. Melissa Pino. Thank you, Chairman Bender. And this is a real question because I can't, it's not anything with the county's technology. I can't access the, the backup on my phone right now. Was the, comp was the procurement on the, con the consulting that um, y'all found out about on this item, the third party that's coming in to assess the fleet, was the procurement in the backup? I don't believe it's part of the item. Um, and th like I said, it was a real question. I am really happy that Mr. Marino is gonna get this um, plan. It sounds like a really good plan. I mean, I don't know that much about it, but I know that something has been needed for a very long time, but these days when I'm watching along in a meeting and all of a sudden I hear from administration the terms third party, objective look, the word consultant doesn't get used a lot. Sometimes there are various ways to phrase this. I would just like to always encourage the board to take a look into how the procurement has happened because it seemed that the board was hearing about that for the first time. Uh, maybe not, um, the public didn't know about it. Um, it's probably not that big of a deal. I understand that these things can happen through normal administration, but at the same time, it's an out of state um, company. Um, Commissioner May, it makes me wonder if, you know, Covenant with the community was involved. It's another contract. Every single time a contract like this goes out, it should have all of these components, and it's not happening. Maybe it did on this particular item, and then that'll be a win. Um, but I, I am just encouraging the board, when these things pop up and they pass very quickly in a meeting, please check into them and just make sure, um, because a, a lot of T's aren't getting uh, crossed and a lot of I's aren't getting dotted. Thank you. Correct. Uh, for the record, I was aware that it was going on, and also I don't think that the covenant for the community applies to every procurement. I'm, I'm, I'm just that, you know, being honest that that not every procurement has to have the covenant for the community. It's specific ones that that have that, okay. um, and so I, I, you know, I don't know if there was anybody local that could do that. So okay. Uh, item 18, to take a motion. So moved. Second. All right, please vote. Motion passes 5 0, Wes. Yeah, as uh, just some commentary to the consultant or the, the group we hired. There were two groups in the region, not necessarily local that do those sort, that sort of work. One of those groups does regular maintenance for us. We didn't feel that that would be a good idea to have the people doing maintenance also doing the evaluation. That so we chose fair. the other group. Yep, that seems fair. Yep. Great, thank you. Uh, item 19, recommendation concerning the approval uh, of the community partners application for fiscal year 21-22. We have a speaker, Andrew Bluer. I didn't want this item to be rubber stamped because I don't have any backup on that. When you say community partners, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. I mean, we don't even have a community center in District 1. I mean, there's several community centers in District 5. There's several community centers, I think, in District 3. I'm not sure about District 2, 
but they got everything else. They got sidewalks on both sides of Sorrento Road, I mean on Gulf Beach Highway, and I don't have sidewalks on Softly Field Road. And the state thought that we needed a timed crosswalk there, but we don't have any sidewalks. Bus stops still, get, kids have to walk to the bus stops, so you want them to walk on a busy, softly feel. And that was promised back with LOST1 that we would have sidewalks. We've got a sidewalk on Cerny Road. Can anybody explain that in engineering? Mr. Blair, if you want, I'll answer your question about what the item is. Huh? I'll answer that uh, question about what the item is. Okay, answer the question. Sure. But a, don't it, I get my time? Well, sure, we'll pause it. Okay, okay, pause. Uh, pause my time. So this is an application that we'll be sending out to what we've previously called outside agencies uh, that, that can apply uh, for our budget cycle. Okay, well, that's like the Wheels on Meals or whatever in Beulah yes, sir. Senior Center? Yes, okay. Sir. So this is just the application that we're approving. And like a Marie Young, Marie Young did you know, breached her contract with the governor or whatever that she wouldn't run for re-election after she was appointed a county commissioner. She gets a community center named after her. I don't think. I mean, I, 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 I like I like Marie Young, but I, I carried her briefcases back and forth to her car while y'all was remodeling the old courthouse, whatever, and just in hopes to get on her good side so I'd get my boat ramp, and that never happened. <laughs> But Marie is still eligible for Meals on Wheels. If What's we that? She's still eligible for Meals on Wheels because she's a senior. If we fund that for Council on Aging. Yeah, but we don't have a community center in District 1. Uh, Jeff, gosh, was out of, out of the... We've got, so, we got a senior center. They're going to put one on outline. I late. said a community center. No children allowed in the senior center. There's a difference between a senior center and a community center. So, anyway. We've got a senior center. So. Yeah, you got a senior center. But what about a community center? See, I wanted that. I wanted that over there at the North Perdido Bay um, boat ramp, kids park. It was going to be well, if you, Wilson Robbins didn't give you the pass down. That was supposed to be the Veterans Memorial Kids Park, Veterans Memorial's Kids Park boat ramp fishing pier. Has anybody ever gone to Fairhope and gone out there and seen a beautiful sunset at Fairhope? I'm tired of driving all the way over there. Although I, I kind of double dip a little bit because I go over there and buy my gas in Alabama because it's cheaper because we've got a four cent gas tax for ECAT. Thank you, Mr. Y'all need to rescind that. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Any other speakers? Uh, no, sir. Move the item in the affirmative. Okay. Please vote. Jeff, you do have a beautiful 100-acre park at Outline Field 8 that Navy Federal's putting in. I, I don't have any community centers in District 4. Just yeah, no, Madam Administrator, no. I want to take the moment to, uh, to, to we'll get you one. compliment your staff on, uh, on refining that process of the kind of a unified ask. Um, it's going to make it much easier to review and to, and I think we're going to be in a situation of having to, uh, um, you know, it's going to be some yeses and some noes, and it's going to be with all of the packages being identical. Uh, it'll make it much easier to evaluate them uh, and, and rack and stack them. So uh, thank you for what looks like very hard work on the part of your staff. And just uh, on the comments this morning, uh, it didn't need to be part of the application process, but just the greater process that we 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 seek updates from those. And so that passed five zero. Um, 21, a recommendation concerning the local agency emergency repair agreement between the State of Florida Department of Transportation and Escambia County, Florida for road shoulder repair on County Road 292, West Detroit, Stefani Road at Eagle Road. Andrew Bluer. Again, I want Florida sunshine. I really couldn't see where the cost code account this money is coming out of. Can anybody explain that to me? Commi I mean, Commissioner Gilly. So it's fund 112, sir. I was going to say this is 112, which is disaster recovery, which is hurricane and emergency response. 
So this is, is that the same fund you all was giving to free ECAT rides and, and spreading COVID to the nursing homes? Take a motion. Move the aye, nay, for a move. <laughs> Please vote. Uh, motion passes 5 0. Item 22, purchase order to Lux Solar, Andrew Bluer. I guess this might be a good idea, but there at uh, Softly and Muldoon, the state put in one that was, um, I guess, Gulf Power provide the power to it. And uh, I'm sure that costs less. The Florida state, I guess, optimized their tax dollars, I, I hope. But then, I mean, we're robbing Peter to pay Paul because Florida DOT won't take care of the responsibility of flood damage on Blue Angel Parkway. I mean, we spent LOST money, uh, best of my knowledge, to refurbish and expand um, Barefoot Estates Pond, but I don't think Florida DOT gave any money for that stormwater, and basically the water from Blue Angel Parkway goes in Barefoot Estates, and likewise, the Florida DOT, Blue Angel Parkway water goes down this here Floridian two ditch that we're gonna expend money, and I think FDOT should be contributing the not replacing a 50 foot pipe from what I understand. I think that ditch would have a higher volume, would have a higher volume than the, a 50 foot pipe. And okay. like I say, we can get a minority contractor to clean the ditch out, but I don't think a minority contractor can um, put in a 50 foot pipe. I mean, this is 50 foot in diameter and I haven't seen one of those. I'm, I mean, they got like, big digs underneath the English Channel and stuff like that. But uh, I don't think a minority contractor can do that. Okay, thank you. If you just want to stay right there for a minute so we can vote on this item and we'll call you right back up on the next Yeah, one. yeah, because we're gonna let the minorities clean the ditch and yeah. let the other ones put the pipes in. That's great. Oh, that's a good uh, item 22, yeah, yeah. take a motion. Let's move the that's item a great in the covenant. affirmative. Second. Second from Commissioner Bergosh, please vote. Item 22 passes 5-0, item 23. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate your support on that. Those, those crosswalks have been a huge uh, safety benefit to Perdido Key, and of course we lost them in the uh, hurricane. So sure. uh, thank you very much, everybody. Contract award for Klondike Road at Cedar Brook Estates Pond. Andrew Bluer. Um, Gulf Power is gonna miss the revenue out there on Perdido Key. Okay, this is LOST4. And we're going to spend money on Cedarbrook Estate Pond. Somebody explain that to me. I mean, this is uh, LLC that's profiting from my LOST4 money. And like I say, you never know what these here LLCs could be. I mean, it could be the same thing as Adam's Home. They just changed the LLC, and I guess they can give a bigger campaign contribution in 2024. Sure, thank you. Yeah, just don't go anywhere, you got one more. Yeah, because 2022 is coming up before 2024. They'll it probably is. get most of the money. I'm, I'll move this item in the affirmative. Second. Please vote. Sunbiz gives all the, uh, you, can, you can follow all the LLCs on Sunbiz. You can see who, who the address is. You can search by address. If you, 
sometimes they, they match up. You can get a long list of. Well, Mr. Chairman, if they have an out-of-state LLC and they're hiding behind it, it's a little harder to find. It could be, but yeah, yeah SunBiz right. helps. Yeah. Yeah. Motion passes 5 0. 24 concerning contract war for construction, engineering, inspection services for the Kempstrand Road, uh, pedestrian upgrades, drainage and pedestrian upgrades. Mr. Bloor? Yeah, I was promised some drainage on Muldoon Road back in, I don't know, 1995. I mean, Pam Childers can pull those up because she's got BBC, BOCC records that she can. But anyhow, I was drainage upgrades, LOST1, LOST2, LOST3, didn't get them. I don't know what happened. But I do want, on Muldoon Road, since we got a Dollar General, and I don't understand why we didn't get sidewalks when the commercial Dollar General went in there. We didn't get sidewalks. It's crazy. It's commercial on Softly Field. I mean, Gulf Beach Highway has sidewalks on both sides and park benches, but Softly Field don't have a sidewalk in front of Dollar General. I, my grandma, I mean, not my mother-in-law, she had an electric wheelchair and she got scared to death out of me, but boy, she got out there on that road and she, with her electric wheelchair and went to the Dollar General. People didn't like that at all. But I congratulated her. I said, maybe if somebody run over you or whatever, we'll get a sidewalk there. I mean, we got, I didn't say die. But they would hear, you could have called the Levin firm. You My grandma Levin got firm, ran really over by a reindeer. So, I mean, a, a public works truck hit her, you know, cause they out there cleaning the ditches on Muldoon and ran over. But anyhow, still don't have raised sidewalks with curb drains there. So when y'all gonna do this here on um, Kim Stan Road, remember since about 1995, the county commissioners has promised me drainage and I haven't gotten it yet. And no sidewalks on Softly Field yet either. Sure, thank you. All right, don't go anywhere. All right, item uh, 24. Move the item. Can we just move the, can we move the item? Yes. Okay, yeah. Mr. Chairman, while we're waiting to vote, but Andrew, if you called 11 Pepitone and Rafferty Law Firm, if you, she would have got hit and they would probably would have gotten you some money. Well, I've already called them <laughs> and Allison's done a wonderful job at protecting stupidity. She has them under retention. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, I think she has them on under retainer. I even returning. called the <laughs> Alabama Hammer or whatever, and they haven't gotten back to me yet. I think they're going to negotiate a contract with Allison. So y'all going to have to increase her budget so she can have every lawyer. Okay, Mr. Retainer. Bloor, Mr. Bloor, uh, recommendation concerning written request from the ARC Gateway is, is uh, car 3-1. Yeah, why didn't y'all do something to keep that house from getting flooded? I city. mean, my house got it's flooded. A, a, I got 13 people that houses got flooded in the Bellevue area. And then if you go down there, down Muldoon, by that Muldoon Pond, there's even more houses that got flooded or whatever. Thank you. And I mean, if you're going to waiver this, which I think you should, because you didn't protect that house from getting flooded, I think you ought to pay for all the damages on Muldoon and on... Thank you, sir. It's in the city, sir. Huh? It's in the city. I know, but y'all are waiving the grant. The, the grant came from us, but the, the city had actually just done an extensive drainage project at the airport. Well, probably all that Hurricane water from Sally. the jailhouse ran down there into the city. That, it's, uh, it'd have to cross Bayou Tahar. Okay. Thank well, you, We probably had to get some minorities to put some pipes in so that water wouldn't go <laughs> away over there. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Uh, I mean, commit. Uh, motion for car 3-1. A second. All right, please vote. <laughs> motion passes 5-0. Uh, 
Uh, item two, recommendation concerning CARES Act funding. Mr. Bluer. Um, I just wanted to remind y'all, Commissioner Bender, that um, C Commissioner Bagosh asked for this, okay? And restore money for workforce development. Sorry, that's the next item. Oh, uh, well, I signed up for 2 3 or. This is oh, Pam, you did it to us again with high responsibilities. So are, 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 you, are you trying to talk on 3 3 instead of 3 2? Yeah, 3 3, I guess. Okay. All right, yes. hold on one second then. Uh, so, board, I don't think we need to take any action. Uh, and uh, so we'll go to. Ma'am? Okay. All right. So, uh, recommendation concerning sword with restore, item 3 3. That's the one I wanted. Okay. That wasn't my fault. That was the guy out there in the front. I told him. That's okay. We let your, we're letting you speak. Okay. Just like I say, all this here, restore money or whatever. We could use that as restore money. From what I understand, there's money allocated for my boat ramp, but it's not going to get here until three more months. That's terrible. Let's use some LOST money and get started with bids or whatever, and then we can, you know, chase that little pea underneath the shell when it comes, okay? But put it out to bid right now so I, we can get started. And like I say, restore, I mean, that's the just thing about that. We use restore money for all those little oyster shells out there on Navy Point, and something tells me, chaps and Tim and you, Doug on the Hill, are getting a lot of fire for these oyster shells or whatever. There's a lot of people that don't like oysters, I guess. And I mean, y'all should have moved them out as far as you could or whatever. So. And I don't blame you, I blame the administrator. Now that's probably before your time, Janet Gilly. It was probably before your time, it was the previous county administrator that probably wasted all that restore money on that oyster shells. But you have the responsibility now is correct all past mistakes. Mr. Chairman, I wanna make it a point to say that uh, the Living Reef Shoreline at uh, Navy Point, uh, while certainly it took an enormous amount of work on the part of staff, uh, if you have somebody to blame, Mr. Bluer, blame me. I'm very proud of that project. In fact, the very first bags that were put down were the um, uh, were my son's Eagle project. Uh, so it was an ex excellent project uh, that has done an extraordinary bit of work for, uh, for Navy Point. So I'm very proud of it. Thank you. I'm, I'm just disappointed to hear that uh, a local business won't be able to contribute to that uh, Marina Oster Bar, by Tahar closing, uh, Hurricane yeah, Sally yeah. finally got him. Yeah, they've been uh, a long that's time. A, that's a, a huge loss for that, and yeah, yeah. Um, so. And they did a lot of good work at AK Suter. Yeah, when my, when my kids went to yeah. school, they they sponsored class this was for years. So hate, hate to see that that uh, yeah. that all the flooding they get from hurricanes finally finally yeah. took them. Good family, great yes, family. Uh, Commissioner, maybe you have a or. No, no, I just uh, Andrew. I mean. You, I want to apologize for you having to take uh, Commissioner Young's briefcase to the car and you didn't get that boat ramp. And so I apologize for Commissioner Underhill, do you have any discussion on this item? Yeah, uh, this, um, yeah. obviously uh, I put this on the agenda. I mean, I think everybody's fully aware of what happened when the, uh, somehow this uh, restore money um, became a part of a appropriations ask in Tallahassee. Um, that appropriations ask uh, indicated that um, you know that we were that this 900,000 was somehow um, had been made available to Florida West. Um, I wanted to have this discussion because uh, Commissioner May's office and I worked very closely together, very hard uh, to get this. And in fact, the reality is that too little of the restore money um, is going to, um, you know, to, to <laughs> quite frankly, to the the things that you know would make a difference with regard to diversifying the economy uh, with 1.5 billion of it shoved over in triumph where it's essentially sitting at rest. Um, for this project really is one that was very important to me. So Commissioner May, I wanted to make sure that something hadn't happened 
whereby the soar with restore, which from my perspective was created by the minority owned business community. Um, I know I was lobbied very hard by the minority business community. Um, I mean, <laughs> some of those guys, Tony McRae, used up my whiteboard many, many times. Uh, Mike Hicksart, uh, Mike, Mike Hicks from Hicksart, um, you know, really just burned, uh, you know, burned a hole in my head uh, to make sure that I understood this, uh, that I was on board with it. And at no time as we were creating this did I see that we were going to, like, hand that money over to Florida West. And then the further discussion that I have on that that really kind of I distinctly remember Commissioner Barry many times saying that this really isn't Florida West's wheelhouse. Um, so when I saw Florida West making a, an approach request, utilizing that money as a local match, I just wanted to see if we were, had we, are we moving in a different direction as the board? Commissioner May, did you intend for, did you expect Florida West to be the ones that would be executing? Soar with Restore? Commissioner, I, I wish Florida West was here to speak for themselves. Uh, I was unaware of any appropriation that they were requesting. Uh, although I, I'm supportive of any money we can get for workforce, but I, I see these as two completely different things. I was unaware of it okay. uh, until I, I saw it uh, yeah. wherever I saw it. So uh, if, if I, I know the, it was, the bill was changed and the, the match is no longer. Uh, yeah, they, they have pulled the 900,000 out. And I, but I, I, you know, one of the things with Soar with Restore and that really caught my attention on it um, was that within our minority community, we have too few uh, uh, examples of, uh, of the employer uh, being essentially uh, look like they come from the same place uh, as the employee. Right. Um, and so I was, I'm very hopeful that as we, as we implement SOAR with Restore, um, that that, is, that remains uh, sort of an activity that is really driven by, of, and for our minority business community. Um, and, 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 and Doug, and I certainly appreciate it. And you've been very supportive. Uh, I mean, candidly, you were very outspoken about the lack of minority businesses and, and supporting that. And so I appreciate it. And it's unfortunate uh, that the words of Mr. Brewer is the perception that we have uh, that, well, that's <laughs> that, 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 that minorities clean ditches uh, and there's no procurement opportunity. And that's why I, I believe that we have to have a robust. Uh, workforce training program and we have to have an inclusion program and that's why I've said it and so yeah. uh, the the uh, amount of dollars that we spent with um, African American companies is it, one unacceptable too embarrassing for a county uh, of this size and so if we don't begin to uh, provide opportunities for young people to excel they won't do it and so uh, I don't see soil with the restore uh, as a um, collaborative or, or, or effort that's dependent on uh, legislative help. That was a, uh, a, a triumph ask that we've worked on for the last four or five years. I had two projects, as each of the five did, and one was the Hollis T. Williams, the first African-American city council person uh, to do that project with the city, and the other one was a, a workforce program in which I know that you and Mike Hicks and Tony McRae all worked, particularly on the cyber side. and. I was more focused on, on the construction side, mm -hmm. but I see them both as great training opportunities for workforce development. Well, I appreciate you giving credit. Uh, they worked, they worked me over. So I didn't, I mean, it really was a, uh, a very hard and aggressive, uh, um, uh, uh, very instructional for me. I mean, very, uh, you know, it, when, you know, Mr. Bluer's comments uh, notwithstanding, I'll tell you that, that that's not how, <laughs> that ain't how white people think. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm gonna be on a drill weekend this weekend. Half of my wardroom is minority or female, uh, wardroom being the officers. Um, you know, we, I don't, I don't understand, I don't, I don't understand where that kind of talk comes from. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I was I was the guy in the bottom of the ditch digging it growing up, you know. So we didn't, poverty doesn't know skin color. But I do absolutely. Make, I, mean, I do want to make sure that we understand that that we are still on that you know, dedicated to the idea that soar with restore is about the minority business community, um, you know, growing its own uh, and growing workforce capabilities and, and abilities within the, the minority workforce community. Now, that was certainly my intent uh, throughout the process of making it, of getting it to be a restore project, um, and the idea of turning it over. Uh, to an organization that really does has not really produced. I mean, you've said many times, "Give me five jobs in my district." Um, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I would certainly trust and look to and understand. Keep in mind that just because these are the guys that, that pushed for it doesn't mean they're the guys who get to implement it. But I would certainly uh, trust the likes of a Mike Hicks or a Tony McRae 
um, uh, to implement that in our community in an effective manner much more than I would um, uh, somebody who was not uh, a part of, of getting it to, to, to happen. So uh, again, this is a restore project, so it has to go out through procurement, but when I saw that it was sort of being spoken for on behalf of somebody who we, this board, had not given the authority to speak, uh, and I understand now that that may have just been a misstep, um, good, uh, and, and certainly, as the chairman said, they have walked that back, also good. Um, but uh, I, I hope that we are looking to move forward with a minority-centric um, uh, business sector uh, pushing uh, the implementation of SOAR with Restore. Thanks. And, Doug, and, and I appreciate that. And quite frankly, um, we're, we're taking federal dollars, and, 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 and I appreciate your leadership, and I hope I find that same enthusiasm once we uh, begin to implement this money because uh, th that allocation will, will, will not in itself uh, really begin to do the training that is needed, really, uh, to move this community forward, and we do need that training. Uh, and I was in a meeting with the new superintendent uh, and, and Tim and Representative Salzman and uh, with the uh, Florida West people and the George Stone people, uh, and we need to collaboratively put together programs that are going to make it possible for young people to get an opportunity because, as you said, poverty uh, has no color. Uh, it, quite frankly, it has uh, no geographical boundaries. Uh, but what it is, it's, it's systemic oppression and a lack of opportunity for a certain sector. And when the procurement dollars uh, end up in the same hands of the same people for generations and the, the other people remain uh, isolated uh, and outside of, of, of the chain of opportunity, then that is a problem and it's incumbent upon us uh, to create that opportunity. And so uh, we won't have to come to the question of do we have qualified people? Uh, grow your own, train your own. And so I've yelled from the mountaintop uh, from this dais uh, each and every day about inclusion, about opportunity, uh, about training, about equality, and about equity. And unfortunately, on many times, it falls on deaf ears. And I can just tell you, uh, we're working with the administration now on our block by block and our training program. And I would hope that we'd have that support from uh, at least two of my colleagues uh, when we come for help with more resources. So I appreciate you bringing the item to our attention. Thank you, Commissioner. That's all happens, Chairman. All right. Lumen, I was going to get so close to getting you out of here by 8 o'clock. Oh, so if I, you don't I get was, out by 8, I, was, I promise I was you will right, stay the 10. I was right there. Yeah, well, almost. I mean, it doesn't matter. Anytime after 8, I'll stay to 12. I, I'm, well, you know, I mean, we're missing by a couple minutes. Uh, recommendation, uh, County Attorney's Report, recommendation concerning the Scambia County State of Local Emergencies, Melissa Pino. Thank you, Chairman Benner, Melissa Pino, 413, <clears throat> Southeast Boblets. This is a Scrivener's error, right? Doug, you know a little bit about Scrivener's errors. And I hope that you're going to be leading the charge tonight on explaining to everybody that there's no longer any use for a state of emergency. Because at the last meeting, um, a broken clock is right twice a day, so you properly assess that there is no need for us to be in these states of emergency. It's getting embarrassing. Um, COVID is going to be here for a long time. We're not taking the proper measures on it anyway, so it, th this was never an emergency um, for this administration. Sally is done, and we heard excuses why we needed it at the last meeting to still have these states of emergency. <clears throat> we'll probably hear it tonight. Everybody knows we don't need them anymore. Everybody knows that they should be gone by now. And um, at that point, maybe we can start getting some of these wonky procurements and some of this money moving, we can get that taken care of. Because just as we, and thank you, Chairman Bender, I didn't <clears throat> ever know that Covenant didn't go for um, every single procurement. However, what I heard Mr. Marino say is there are two big companies that do the work on, f on this sort of fleet assessment. Does that mean that there are only two big companies in the area or that we're just giving this type of work to big companies? And if there are only two big companies in this area and justifiably the one that does the work on the fleet was knocked out from participation for obvious reasons, why didn't it go out to more states? Why not more areas? How do we know we're getting the biggest bang for our buck when we constantly come up with reasons why we can't send things out for proper procurement? I, if this is such a specialty area, then surely there's interstate travel on it. Any companies in Iowa that do this kind of thing? Georgia? Uh, Texas? I, I think they probably assess plenty of trucks over in Texas. 
and you know all along the Gulf Coast. And so really, please, in these states of emergency, and, and let's start having some more oversight on these, this, these issues. Uh, Sally and COVID at the same time hurt this county so bad financially, it's gonna take us so many years. And then on top of it, we're just throwing money, money away. Just millions and millions of dollars on, on bids coming in at overestimate and going out to sole sources and not putting things out to proper procurement. We will never know how many millions of dollars have been wasted by improper management of our funds during these states of emergency, and it's time for it to come to an end, please. Sure. Thank you. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if I heard big companies. I thought I heard there were only two that do it Is regionally. It big, big companies, okay. I, I'm so, uh, sure. just making sure I don't Mr. know. Chairman, is that the last speaker? That's, uh, that's the speaker on that. Move the item A and B. Second. Second, any discussion? discussion. Uh, Madam Administrator, uh, last time we spoke on this item, you had a uh, what sounded like a uh, fairly thorough landing plan um, that would get us there. We pretty much still on, on glide slope and on glide path for that? Yes, for mid-March. Thank for you the, very much. Uh, Sally. Thank you. Okay, please vote. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, we do not have a speaker on, uh, on the second item, um, but I, I would like the administrator, I mean the attorney, if she could, we've had some discussion. Uh, of course, there's a, uh, a point close to, to me is, is the bridge and how uh, if we have to solicit uh, the help of one of, the, you know, of these lost firms to represent us regarding the bridge, um, that uh, you know, we've initially um, written it out so that if we're able to make a settlement with insurance, uh, that that would be excluded. Um, but I, I just, if you want to give a little update on on the discussions you've had, Robert, point sir. I mean, do you have any idea? I mean, I know we talked about in TPO. Is there any uh, indication uh, of when the bridge is going to open? Are we still on track for April for the two lanes to open? No, sir. I don't know if, if you missed my. This morning, this afternoon, they made an announcement that March 22nd was not going to happen. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I missed that then. Okay. Uh, so March 22nd is not going to happen. They don't know if or when a two-lane variant will, will open. They said they're still on track for a four-lane opening before Memorial Day. Oh, four lanes before Memorial Day. Yes, sir. Yeah. But, but the, the two-lane opening is, is not going to happen uh, on March 22nd or or. Candidly, I never thought it would. But. I, I, I think there's a large majority behind you. Right. We were hopeful, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. hopeful. Uh, certainly, Mr. Chairman, uh, as you've indicated, yes, this agreement does carve out that anything that the county gets on its own behalf that obviously we don't have to shoulder any burden of any sure. contingency contingency fee with that. Um, additionally, after conversations today, I'm very comfortable that the, that the team's goal is to ensure that we are made whole for uh, the fishing pier should that burden to go uh, litigate for that fall to them and try to pass back to, to Skanska or the responsible parties uh, what it took to get made whole sure. um, and, and not have that, that uh, shortfall or delta fall to the county. Um, I can try to answer any specific questions. No, and, and I, Mark, know that is that, I see you back there, Mark. They're, they're available for questions, oh, there should okay. there be That's any, cool. or... Um, um, so what's I, the point of three farms? Th this is, uh, yeah. This is stemming from our conversations with the board in November when this came forward. There was great interest by the board in ensuring that all of our local um, litigating firms on this issue were brought into the fold. So also the, the firms all agreed to this consortium. For public sector clients, they are working as a team, and so this would allow us to use all three firms on our behalf. I, I believe they've somewhat formed like a super team. Super, oh, a super team, like super tobacco. Team. Yeah. Like rotational bidding. You know, yeah. I mean, sure like everybody space jams, get a little bit out of it. You know, uh, yeah. but no, it's, um, but no, this is, is, is something that they've, they, they, they came to us, if I remember correctly, uh, they presented this idea to us that if, if we were gonna do one, we were gonna, we were gonna do it with all three. We certainly had this conversation with the board in November when this first came to, to you all, and that was the ask. Of the, sure. My takeaway from the board was to come back with 
Well, I'm not did, denying that, Madam Council. I was just asking why. Yeah, when we did yep. come back, they were certainly willing to, to search. What are the three firms? Elstock Wicken, the Beggs and Lane, Beggs and Lane, and the, the Levin firm. Um, and so I just want to, Mark, I know you've, you've got like a statement. Um, if, if um, you know, we, we are doing this to protect our rights. Um, Mark is still um, working with their insurance to reach a settlement. Um, this is by, by no means saying we're giving up on that. We are still working diligently towards that and hope that we can reach an agreement. But because of some deadlines um, to be able to, to, to file, um, it is prudent that we take this action. Um, do you want to? So I have been communicating with uh, the insurance group who represents them along with uh, several others. Uh, we've had a very open and uh, transparent dialogue with them in, about the situation. In our last conversation last week, I told them that we will not miss any deadlines for filing any proper paper, paperwork in court, and we will not jeopardize our legal avenues. With that being said, I also expressed a desire to have ongoing and transparent dialogue with them to see if we can come up with a solution to try not to go through the cumbersome court process. Perfect. Thank you. Commissioner Underhill? No other speakers? No, sir. I move that we authorize the uh, county attorney's office to execute the plan as, uh, as presented in the backup. Thank you. Is there any other? A second. Okay. Any other discussion? Commissioner May, any other discussion? No, I don't. Okay. I don't have. I'm, I'm, Please, I'm, I'm here to midnight. It doesn't matter. I was so close. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I thought. Motion passes 5 0. Uh, we're on the add on items. Um, I just want to clear. Jeff, I think your add on yeah, item was the, was the, okay. Um, so we have the single add on, on add on item by Commissioner Barrett. We do have one speaker, Mr. Bluer. Robert, why, why, why they're coming? Just a quick question. I, I know it's your lead and you dealing with Santa Rosa. Is there any other uh, for spring break and summer if the bridge is not open or? Uh, uh, the ferries or anything. Before you start my time. Oh, I'm, I'm talking. Yeah, yes, sir, we're not hold, starting your time. Hold on. Hold on. So had, Let me clean these it. ditches and he'll get right with you. <laughs> so are there any things that we're doing for, to get over to the beach? I mean, in yes, ferries sir. or anything? So, so we're working diligently to have the, the ferry landing up and running or available to accept a ferry by the time the first ferry comes back, right. which is my understanding could be as early as the week of March 22nd. Uh, we are working with, uh, we'll be working with the city of Pensacola and FDOT and the city of Gulf Breeze to, to hopefully find a way that uh, we can best utilize that transportation uh, to get people out to uh, Gulf Breeze or Pensacola Beach or to Pensacola. And then we also work on an MOT uh, on Highway 98 at 399 so that cars don't have to stop at the stop sign to turn right to go towards the Garcon Point Bridge and we can keep them flowing freely on the weekends starting Friday nights and ending Monday mornings. And I just ask that question, Robert, for spring breakers, college students, and yep. people who may want to know who may watch. So, so thank you. We hope, we hope to have a best traffic solution that they, they can have. No, no, thank you. I appreciate your under, leadership. Under the circumstances. Yeah. Tough times. So, so Mr. Bluer, you signed up for two items. This is actually just a single item, so you uh, won three minutes. I don't even know what Barry's add-on is. <laughs> okay. But I signed up for all add-ons. Sure. And I'm mainly Jeff Bagosh. So both of them. Th three minutes each. No, <laughs> so the add-on was already taken. Uh, that's a good one, please. Um, so that's the Commissioner Barry's add-on, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yield 30 minutes of my time to Andrew. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll defer on Barry's thing. I mean, we, if it's in District 5 or whatever, we spent LOST money to replace Old Corey Field Bridge twice. So I'm good with that, Barry. Perfect. So next one, Jeff Bagosh's. He doesn't have one. We already voted for that one. That one already passed. We, it, it's been added to the, uh, yeah. You didn't, you didn't it it added on to what? No, he, he spoke on it. He did speak on it. I yeah. didn't know the brownout. No, I sir, that's not, that's, not, that's not an item on the agenda. Did he speak on it? 
He spoke on Jeff. Not, that on, was, the, not, on, not on the brown. Well, I, I don't remember thing. what he said. Yeah, I mean, so you think not, you can repeat it? That's, oh, hold on. Let's, let's, we're gonna what was your, I thought your add-on was the brown out. No, no sir. It was the, the, uh, the appointments that you did speak on. My yeah, his appointments. Oh, uh, well, you talked about the brown out this morning. I it thought was Michael Beerman. Yes, sir. And, 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 and no, that was just well, a, a topic. Since he that, gave me 30 minutes of his time, I. But did. after the meeting's over, I'm going to give you 30 minutes of my time. Yeah. After the meeting. After so the meeting. We're, we're going to take up the item real quick. Um, Let me address this. I wish the press was here. I am a super minority. Just because I like pigment, don't think that you have a minority over me. Because when I say minority, I don't look at skin color. I am colorblind, okay? Yeah. So I hate the idea that you throw this white supremacy thing Mr. on Blur, me. Mr. But Blur. That's, Mr. Blur. Oh, Thank Mr. You, Blur, I don't know what you're talking you about. Just, you just threw that on me. Mr. Blur. You and Doug Underhill saying, <laughs> I told you I clean ditches. Me and Doug Underhill, I don't think okay. we're doing, we doing anything. I together. clean ditches. Mr. Blur, please sit yeah. down. Yeah. Just get your facts straight. Yeah, Thank you. All right, so we have an uh, item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm asking the board to allocate $1.612 million from, uh, for the re rehabilitation replacement of a number of bridges, Gibson at Alligator, Pond Baron at Unnamed, Pond Bill at Unnamed, County Red 196 at Cow Devil, Guidey at Unnamed, Interstate Circle FDOT to be funded from District 5 Discretionary Fund, and to then reimburse District 5 Discretionary Fund by the same $1.612 million when the budget amendment comes forward on March 25th, uh, 2021. Um, this is, uh, these, are, these are a pool of projects that, uh, that I need to be moving forward and three weeks, believe it or not, does, does help. And uh, the, uh, the reallocation of District 5 projects, of District 5 project funds was not ready for tonight. So I needed to, uh, I needed to jumpstart them by doing this and I appreciate my colleague's support. Zach. Thank you. All right, please vote. Any further discussion? Motion passes 4-0, Commissioner Underhill off the dais. Any other business for the good of the whole? We are adjourned. Thank you.